Hi, welcome guys. Y'all calling me grandma news in the chat? <laughs> I see you guys slaying at 82. Oh my god. I think I skipped a couple of birthdays. I feel like I was in my low 70s or something last time. <laughs> it's all the all the weed from 420, I guess. Just aged me. No, Siri, I don't want to talk to you. Graduated from mother news to grandmother news. <laughs> Oh, Slay. <laughs> Welcome, guys, to the stream. Uh, yeah, we're gonna play some more of this game. I took some notes, too, on the, uh, on, like, the game mechanics for the, um, whatchamacallit, the investigation, since that was, like, a little com complicated. I took, like, some screenshots on my phone, too, so I feel like that kind of helps me refresh. Because I remember that was, like, a little, a little complicated <laughs> for me, you know, for my old brain and my old wrinkled, tired brain. It's hard. It's hard being 82. And yet I'm still out here streaming for you guys. <laughs> even after all that, even after, even after, you know, aging so hard. Oh, thank you, Captain Draken, for the uh, gifted membership. Appreciate you. And yeah, um, I guess we'll just go ahead and start. I think we're going to be on chapter two. Hopefully I didn't jinx uh, downtown by putting her in the thumbnail. I was thinking about putting um, ideal, but I feel like I kind of have a bad habit of putting dead people in the thumbnails. <laughs> it's like, I feel like people are going to start catching on and be like, oh, that person's dead because we'd be put them in the thumbnail. Because I do that so much, like right after somebody dies, I'm like, this is my last opportunity to use them in the thumbnail. It's like, she's a ghost now too, so you know, we, we could probably put her in more thumbnails. Also, let me know if the music's good too. Hopefully, hopefully it's okay. I think I checked everything pretty well before we started, but let me know. I can hear a voice speaking from somewhere. Oh, is he having like a dream or something? It's the voice of a man echoing angrily in the drab, dusty darkness. Ugh. Just how many times, <laughs> like Kenjo in like the jail cell. Just how many times do you intend to repeat these experiments? Oh yeah, this is our little Danganronpa thing. I followed along because I believed it was the just thing to do, but this is my limit. Of course, I mean, experimenting on children, that's always, that's always for the greater good. Definitely nothing morally fucked up about that. This entire organization is rotten, and you're the most putrid rot of all. His outrage bounces off the walls, causing them to tremble. I can tell just how truly furious he is. But what about? Oh, Wato over here. Oh, what the fuck? Someone tags in my hand from behind, and I turn around. Okay, I'm probably in the jail cell, right, actually. I thought I was, like, working with him for a second. The one pulling me appears to be a young girl, but I can't make her face out in the darkness. Oh yeah, ideal. What was her what was her actual name? Like Saika or something? Nevertheless, her warmth feels familiar. I know this girl. Guys, he's just dreaming about Kenjo, okay? <laughs> Honestly, me too. <laughs> we have that in common. What's wrong? What's wrong? We need to get out of here quickly before they notice us. Sorry, those voices had me curious. I understand, but escaping is our top priority right now. Come on, hurry. Uh, but Kenjo's here. I kind of want to stay. The girl pulls my hand. She's like, fucking simp. The girl pulls my hand and begins running, but I want to listen longer. As we move, I keep my sight directed towards the sounds. How many have died right in front of me? Oh, how many have died right in front of me? How many have I killed? These brats show up in my sleep every night. A begging to be spared. God, they're so annoying. They're like, Ugh, I don't want to die. I'm seven years old. Ugh, get over it. <laughs> I can't take this shit anymore. Oh, it's so hard being a victim. If you want to keep forcing kids into this, do it yourself. You know everyone is insane. God damn it. You, this organization, the detectives. Oh, part of the agency. Every last one of you. I knew this fucking detective agency was sketch as hell. We entered it. Okay, this is literally where we were experimented on too in this like mansion. Cause yeah, it's like the same pathway. I'm surprised he hasn't said anything. What did he say something about it? Maybe he said something about like, oh, this looks familiar, familiar, familiar. We entered a dim passageway and the voices become inaudible. An ice cold breeze blows through my legs, causing my body to shiver. It's freezing, my legs won't move. Or is it that my body is refusing to keep going? Oh yeah, the brain blast. Ugh, ugh. An intense pain shoots through my head and I fall to my knees. 
I wish he would have like a that's so Raven moment or something. You know what I mean? Like the brain blasts aren't really helping him that much. He's not doing a Jimmy Neutron. He's not doing a Ra that's so Raven. Like they're not really doing anything, Watto. You need to work on it. You need to work on it. I have no idea what's happening to my body, but oddly enough, I'm certain of one thing. Something horrific awaits us ahead. Watto, are you all right? At the very least, that old man, what, what was his name again? Senior detective? I feel like he, uh, <laughs> Like, he, I don't know, I kind of feel like he was the guy, the question mark guy. I, I don't know, that, that old man's so sketch. The girl calls out to me in the darkness. Also, it would be really fitting if he was a part of the experiments and then he, like, died in the same area, you know what I mean? That they, like, took place. I feel like that would be kind of, uh, fitting. I really can't see her face at all. The touch of her hand is the only indication that she's standing right in front of me. Oh, is this just, like, more, um, backstory to the scene where she, like, dies? Part one for the first time. It's all right. We'll definitely ache it. Um, once we're back, we. Huh? Her voice cuts in and out like a radio with a weak signal. Before long, the warmth of her hand is gone. Wait. Panicking, I dash further into the passage as if I were chasing after her. My frenzied footfall ring out, rings out, footfalls ring out through the impenetrable darkness. The voices I had heard earlier are gone. A feeling of complete and utter isolation washes over me. Like I'm the only person left on Earth. I can't help but cry out. Don't go, please, don't leave me alone. Alone, alone. As I continue on, a light appears ahead of me. I run towards it with all my strength. I run. You're not supposed to run towards the light. <laughs> and run. Until ahead of me. I see the familiar sight of the entrance hall. Wait. This is... Oh, is he going to finally realize? What happened to the passageway? I had just been running down. Where is the girl who was with me? Why am I in the manor? Did I somehow arrive here at some point? The inside of my head burns with agony. I can't shake the feeling that something terrible is happening. At ease, Watto. This is all to be expected. This is a really weird dream. <laughs> Thank you, Gabe. Take a shot every time someone says the word detective. You would be dead before Target Dog shows up. They really do say that way too much. I I was thinking that even when I was doing like the first episode, I was like, Jesus, do they have to say detective after every nickname? Like, can't wait to say techie, doleful, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> we don't need to say the full name. Thank you for the dono, though. Holmes descends the staircase from the second floor. I'm relieved to finally see a friendly face. Oh, thank you so much, Wolf Allen, for becoming a part of the Kenjo cult. Holmes, what's going on with me? I'm in your dreams. Now, now, calm yourself. Take a deep breath and take your time remembering. As instructed, I take a deep breath and try to recall what had happened. That's right. After I bumped into Holmes' spirit in my room, we spoke until I got sleepy. Wait, am I in a dream? That must be it. You're half right and half wrong. Girl, you really like penetrating my dreams? Ow! I yelp as Holmes flicks my forehead. Huh, that hurt. What the? If you die in the dream, you die in real life. If this is a dream, why can I feel pain? Our minds are closely intertwined. It seems I can read your thoughts, any of your dreams, and even interfere with your perception. Interfere with my perception. Simply put, I'm able to touch and hurt you. If you don't believe me, shall I give that thick skull of yours another smack? I, I get it, I get it, really I do. Your reprimands get physical, even when you're in my dreams. Precisely. Such a clever boy deserves a pat rather than a punch, hum? Jesus. She lays a hand on my head as we speak. Her touch reminds me of how lifelike Holmes seems right now. Of course, the situation is objectively unreal. I'm a bit ashamed... And how easily I'm willing to believe any of this is true. Now then, Watto, this is the important part. What do you make of this scene before you? I feel like, I don't know, I guess we'll kind of see how it goes, but I don't know if I really care for the idea of her, like, hand-holding me to, like, remember all of, uh, like, the past. I guess maybe it'd be kind of interesting if she, like, misled us, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it just kind of seems like... I've just seen this trope so many times where, like, you know, the main character, like, forgets important stuff about their past and they have to remember it on their own. I feel like it's just 
better when they like have to do it more so on their own but it's like ideals just in our brains in our walls <laughs> just giving us the the remembering remembering memories for dummies handbook at every like you know every step of the way what what do i make of it this is the entrance hall to the manor exactly as i've known it the level of detail is almost too incredible to be a dream it's hard to not be impressed at my mind for making it. <laughs> Actually, it was me. Um, yeah, I'm the ideal detective, so, you know, I can do this much. I didn't notice anything in particular. Is there something here? <laughs> As I thought, you still lack the proper foresight. Holmes takes my hand and walks toward the entrance, pulling me along. Watto, the deep connection of our psyche, share, share has resulted in major changes to your brain. In more concrete terms, I've no doubt that you've gained access to the special ability I possessed while I was alive. Oh, oh, you're gonna give us your special ability? Uh, special ability? What ability? My head's been pounding for a while, but I haven't noticed any changes to my body. Oh my god, can you give me your Sharingan? I wonder, can you feel anything at your feet? My feet? Now that she mentions it, I do feel something touching my foot. I look down to inspect it. And what I see is... Eh? I finally process what's touching me. What the fuck? Oh, God damn it. I fucking cursed you downtown. <laughs> it's downtown's arm. Stiff like a porcelain doll. Well, okay, maybe since we're seeing, like, you know... Maybe, like, we're, since we're seeing that she's, like, dead or whatever, that means that, like... We get to stop her, okay? We're having a That's So Raven moment. <laughs> We're seeing the future, but we're gonna stop it just like Raven would as she would as she should queen Her hand is coated in a dark liquid leaving a crimson red handprint where she made contact I heave as a metallic stench hits my nose, but since this is a dream. I have nothing in my stomach to vomit out. Oh What the oh just kidding everybody's dead. See guys. I didn't just jinx her <laughs> It isn't just downtown detective. The other detectives I met lie in a heap upon the floor. God dang this. Freaking music rocks! I met lie in a heap upon the floor like figurines toppled from a shelf. Among them is doleful, prone, and lifeless. Roddy's hand stretches towards me as she foams at the mouth. They're not very bloody. Her eyes roll up and unmoving. <laughs> Thank you, Ideal, for this super nice uh, dream that you're giving me. Doleful! <laughs> My favorite! Oh yeah, everybody else. My boyfriend! Oh yeah, and the, the other people whose names I, I don't want to really remember. I rush to Doleful and check for a pulse, but feel nothing. I heard no voices, nor breathing, aside from my own. Not one of them is showing even a single sign of life. Downtown's face, which usually wore such a carefree smile, is frozen and contorted in anguish as blood still trickles down it. She was so full of energy just last night. The thought brings me to tears. It's unforgivable. Oh, welcome, Bree. Oh, what scene did I just walk in on? It's a dream. Don't worry. It's a dream. But I think he's, I think he's like Raven. You know what I mean? I think he's seeing the future. It's the future he can't see. Who could, who could do something so horrendous? It seems you two have now seen how this tragedy plays out. Holmes walks over to me as I stand rooted in place. Upon seeing her face, I'm finally able to regain some composure. Silly me getting all worked up. <laughs> this is just a dream, right? These people outshine me in every way. They would never get massacred like this. I guess this is kind of how he gets like, uh, I don't know, on the road to becoming like a pro tag. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, if you just let them do their thing, they're all going to die. At the risk of repeating myself, you're half right and half wrong. This is a dream, but also not. What's that supposed to mean? Please, just tell me how right, Holmes. Holmes flashes her coldest smile yet. The tone of her voice as she answers sends shivers down my spine. This is a tragedy that... that. Oh my god, you Siri. Can you not? Can you not, Siri? Please? <laughs> this is a tragedy that could occur in the future. You have gained the ability to foresee such events. Okay, so yeah, it is like a future thing. Ah! I wake up upon my bed. The morning sun shines through the window, filling the dusky room with light. 
My whole body is soaked from night sweats, but despite just waking up, my wits remain sharp. It feels less like I was sleeping and more like I simply opened my eyes. Was that all a dream? My hands tremble as a tragic scene I had witnessed moments ago flashes through my mind. Is she just going to be following me, like, the whole time? Like, or not? I was definitely there just now. I saw a downtown detective's corpse and my hands soaked in blood. It felt far too real to be a dream. Could that really have been a potential future tragedy like Holmes said? Oh, that's right. Holmes! Holmes! Holmes and I had been speaking in my dream, but now she's nowhere to be seen. I calm down and my confusion begins to fade. I guess she can only show up at night since she's like a ghost. I don't know. Have to be out when it's spooky. As it does, the absurd events that took place when I entered this room, not to mention it in my sleep, feel more and more like an illusion. That's right. Holmes died. Everything that happened last night, including me talking to her, it was all just in my head. After all, there's no way someone who died could reappear as a ghost right before my eyes. Never mind. She's going to appear right now. <laughs> and what's up, loser? Good morning, Watto. I hope I hope your dreams were pleasant. <laughs> Holmes's body pops out of the ceiling. Eep! I suppress my shrieking before another manages to burst out. Talk about a close one. I was on the brink of getting the other detectives all worried about me again. Did you really have to fly out of the ceiling? I was merely checking on the other... On the others, on the upper floor, Gourmet has a funny way of sleeping. I can't hear about it. Nope, I'm sure it's very fan servicey. No thanks. Peeping into women's rooms is a great way to get decommissioned as a detective. Oh, my ma, you certainly lack a sense of romantic adventure for one so young. As a ghost, it's only natural to peep on people here and there. Forgive me. After the oh, forgive me. After the graphic premonition you witnessed, I thought a little surprise might be a welcome diversion. I appreciate the thoughts. Oh, thank you, Crocomancer. Hey, Weeby. FYI, there are free time events in the game, but they're hard to get. Still trying to find them all on my file. Could upload it if helpful. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. Or helpful. You'd be the helpful detective. <laughs> get it? But, uh, yeah, that's cool. I wonder, how do you unlock them? I guess you could type it in chat. <clears throat> And let me know. But yeah, I was kind of wondering, because I feel like, I don't know, it would be good to have some kind of, uh, you know, um, whatchamacallit, free time events in this uh, game. Especially Doleful. I want to learn so much about him. He just seems so uh, interesting. I suppose Holmes' prank did distract me from my mental panic somewhat. I recall what I saw in my dream with a clear mind. All the detectives dead upon the floor, the stench of blood, their faces contorted in anguish. And Holmes warning me that the future holds... Warning me the future holds this catast cat uh, catastrophe in store. Oh, yeah, I think I can get them through another playthrough new game. That makes sense, too. I guess we can always just watch, like, a, I don't know, like a, you know, playthrough or something on YouTube if we don't unlock them in this, this playthrough. Holmes, do you remember what we talked about in my dream? Of course I remember. As I said, I can read your mind. So I know what you're thinking right this moment. You refuse to believe it, don't you? Enough of that. Everything we spoke of during that dream is true. Now you're aware of the denouement, the ability I had to predict the future. And as we saw, the predicted future we face is death for all. <laughs> Very lovely ending there. Predict the future? Come on, how would that even work? And why do I have this ability all of a sudden? My brain can't keep up with this. Yeah, well, I can't say I understand the principles behind it myself. You can't, then how? When a thing comes naturally, you don't question the process behind it, do you? You breathe, but can you explain how your body takes in oxygen? I think like a scientist could. No, I can't, but... Exactly, the same goes for my denouement. What matters is that it allows me to see the future. I have no interest in how it works. Oh, that's one way to go about it. I get the feeling that I've been tricked by her silver tongue. Or is that just my imagination? At any rate, don't think we should set our minds... Don't you think we should set our minds at a much higher priority right now? Huh? What higher priority would that be? If and how we can prevent the tragedy you glimpsed, of course. Her words give me a start. She's right. There's no time to despair. Not after the tragedy I've foreseen. 
Right now, I need to figure out what I can do to change that outcome. But how would I even start? Is it possible to change whatever future this denouement... Am I saying that right? Ability predicts? Naturally, predicting and preemptively stopping tragedies is how my reputation grew to begin with. If you act with conviction, I'm confident that you too can alter fate's design. I guess no wonder she's so OP. She can literally, like, I don't know, predict the future. But I'm just a total nobody. What difference could I even make? Honestly, I'm not so sure. Even outside her ability, Holmes was an incredibly gifted person. But me? Incompetent is literally my name. Denouement. Okay. Denouement. Oh, crap. I totally missed that. Um, how do I see? Oh, there we go. There's no way I'd have the power to change the future on my own. There's no need. There's no need to change it on your own. What? How do you know what I... Oh, yeah, you're a ghost. <laughs> how many times must I remind you that I can read your thoughts? A single pebble can tip a scale. Are you familiar with the saying? Many presume their deeds are of no consequences, but they couldn't be more wrong. Even the smallest ripple will disturb the water's surface, in turn leading to other shifts elsewhere. So too will the ripples you can cause others to act, thereby playing a greater role in changing the future than they otherwise would have. Is that how it works? I've always been terrible at speaking French. The Tia Silent is a French loan word. Ah, oh, yeah. Sounds good. Ah, oh, thank you, Cater, for stopping by. That is indeed how it works. Her eloquent words still seem to be leading me on, but I'll trust her for now. Either way, I wasn't planning to stand idly by. What's more, changing the actions of others will be the key to changing the future. Changing their actions, but how? There are several ways. Those who trust... You can simply be asked to adjust. Those who trust you can simply be asked to adjust. Those who are hostile, however, may need to be forced into doing so. Apart from that, it would probably be advantageous to save those detectives who are fated to die. <laughs> probably. But what I saw, there's no way I could act that could actually happen. It'd be kind of interesting if that was like a bad ending, I guess, if you don't do it like right, you know what I mean? I guess I could see that being the case. Couldn't it? I've not seen... I've not been in this manner much, and there are many potential traps. A killer privy to this could easily use that against you. As I said, the mastermind behind this is both prepared and frightfully cunning. Be ready to force a path through, no matter what happens. That way you will avoid repeating my mistake. These words weigh especially heavy, coming from the now deceased Holmes. I need to get myself together. Being reunited with Holmes has made me... Just a little too lax. Even she has, even she was no match for this adverse adversary. I need to put my game face on if I'm going to tackle this. I'm sorry, Holmes. I promise to take your words to heart. That's the spirit, Watto. There's just one more thing I want from you. Holmes' face grows stern as she speaks with a strong voice and clip tones that I've never heard her use before. Under no circumstances are you to tell anyone that you can see me or that you've inherited my abilities, but but why? <laughs> why not? It would be easy to convince them, but if we prove it's true, wouldn't that make everything much simpler? Simpler? Uh, or wouldn't be easy, but, you know, if we did, it'd be good. That's what I meant. If anyone finds out, you're certain to be eliminated, Watto. I will explain why in time. But for now, please do as I say. The organization, the anti-Raven organization. Uh, I do believe you have visitors. Just then, someone knocks on the door. I open to see Armor and Doleful. They're, they've come to tell me that Mystics made breakfast. I hear we get the British breakfast. Thanks, guys. I'm a little sweaty, so I'm going to jump in the shower before heading to the dining room. Understood. Oh, welcome, Melinda. Thanks for stopping by. Mystics home cooking is delicious. Just so you know, we'll go on ahead and get started. Once they leave, I take the towel prepared for me in my room and head to the bathroom on the second floor. But right at that moment... Off to the shower then, are we? <laughs> I'll be watching! <laughs> you better not! For some reason, Holmes acts like tagging along is a normal thing to do here. <laughs> Why are you following me? I'm about to take a shower. Can't you wait in my room or at the dining table? Uh, no can do. It's very important. <laughs> It's very important to the visions or some shit. Oh, now listen to what you're saying. Didn't I tell you at the start that we can't be so Jesus Christ, really? 
Huh? You mean you can't move away from me no matter how hard you try? So it would seem. Think of me as a dog on a leash. I simply get pulled along wherever you're heading. I gotta, I gotta shower my underwear? It's not as if it'll hurt if I see something. And besides, you don't mind anyways, do you? I definitely do. Of course I mind. Do you have any idea how embarrassing it is to have a girl watch me shower? Well, isn't that selfish of you? <laughs> fine, fine. I'll be waiting outside. So you could have waited outside the whole time. You just want to see if you can get away with it. Perv. Okay. But do remember that I'm a ghost now. I can't help if I have to sneak. If I happen to sneak a peek, I can also see through walls. So I will be looking through those. I also have some ghost binoculars. Oh man, if I happen to sneak a peek every once in a while. That sounds like you're already planning to. Oh my god. After showering, I head down to the dining room. The detectives have gathered around the long table, just as they did last night. But unlike yesterday, no one needs to stand guard, meaning this time the entire group is clustered together. Oh, <laughs> girl, what are you doing? Oh my god, Mystic, this is delish. I'm like totally a British foodie now. Oh my god, I love- How did you guys manage to think of combining beans and toast? I mean, god, you guys are just geniuses. You need not embrace me so tightly, downtown detective. My earthly travels have earned me much skill with preserved foods such as these. Flirting with students, you old sleaze bag of a father, the girl grumbled. <laughs> okay, so he is literally her father, scowling at the sausages on her plate. Easy now, downtown is touchy-feely with everyone. Let's not blow things out of proportion. It's all so scrumptious, especially these sandwiches, the aromas of the wine vinegar, these fresh, juicy cucumbers I'm swooning. You must tell me how it's prepared, Mystic, so I can add it to my recipe book. Yeah, I'd like to. Even my mentor, back at my part-time job, could probably handle making these. Oh, oh, sorry, that was me. Why did I sound so sexy for a second? <clears throat> Hub, but of course. In addition, I shall also impart the provincial British folklore associated with these sandwiches. British folklore? Mystic proceeds to give Gourmet and me the recipe, along with a ghost story. I don't really follow. As we eat, the conversation naturally turns to everyone's reports from yesterday. I come the manor from top to bottom, but as expected, the only way in or out is the front door. There is no way for anyone to escape. It would have expedited our search considerably if we had found another secret passage, like the one behind the painting. Okay, so yeah, there's nothing. No other secret passages? I feel like, I don't know. I feel like we should be checking like more thoroughly though, maybe. But as luck would have it, I did come across- Oh wait, I didn't read your first line. I got bored, so I also scoped the manor out. Didn't turn up anything particularly suspicious though. As luck would have it, I did come across blueprints to this manor in the study. Did you say blueprints? How can you just offhandedly bring up something so important? I guess that's just the difference between a four and a five, eh? <laughs> Get her. Guess show it at once, you dingy mop head. Everyone looks at the blueprint, spread across the table. Even at a glance, you can see suspicious space behind the painting. If there really is another hidden passageway, we should be able to find it in these floor plans. However, no matter how hard we scrutinize them, we can't see any area where another hidden passage could exist. So like I thought, the only way out to, is to start knocking the walls down. <laughs> Lena, I see you. <laughs> I see you simping already. Join me. Join me in simping for Renegade. <laughs> Say the word and I shall lay down my life for my compatriots. I stand ready and willing to cross blades with that wicked contraption. He is also insane too, which you know I love. You can't do that. We all need to make it out of here together. Doleful's right, you know. Fortunately, we have plenty of food. So waiting until help arrives is the best course of action. Yeah, I'm doing that too. HQ probably noticed our comms are on the frizz, so they should send help once they realize something's up. Plus, we've got like a whole squad here. All we gotta do is hunger down and keep each other safe. I must agree with downtown. I looked outside this morning and spotted that black machine still circling the manor. Instead of panicking and trying to escape, we should remain calm and continue our investigation of the building's interior. 
I too find no fault with this plan. The study is filled with books, so at least we won't be bored, said the girl, sharing a rather useless tidbit of information. <laughs> Renegade? Just then I hear someone laugh. Yep. <laughs> I had a feeling. We all turn to look, only to see a renegade detective grinning. He begins to speak, his voice dripping with mockery. Nothing to do but wait. Keep calm and investigate. Oh, so happy-go-lucky. I bet the culprit's having a laugh of their own right now. What do you mean? <laughs> Fucking Gamida Sprite, I can't. Doesn't something feel off about this? Us sitting around enjoying a warm meal? Remember, the culprit predicted our every move in order to imprison us in this manner. Oh. What Renegade Detective is saying suddenly makes sense. If the culprit wanted to annihilate us, there would be no need to go to such lengths. Had they destroyed the lock to the door, we'd have all died to that machine. They also could have gotten rid of our food supply beforehand. <laughs> but I guess they just like Dog and Rampa or something, I don't know. <laughs> they just like killing games. Oh, man. So let's do as Holmes would, and face the reality before us to reason out what our perpetrator is plotting. This manner is easily unsustainable. With that in mind, what's the culprit's true goal here? A drama! Preparing for a fight, killing detectives, imprisoning us in the manor, right? Ding! Imprisoning us in the manor, in other words, forcing us to burn up our own time here. Okay. Trying to do something on the outside so we can't, like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Figure it out. Splitted answer incompetent. Basically, us sitting here engrossed in idle chit chat is exactly what the quartering duke wants. If we keep, t keep twiddling our thumbs like this, it'll just lead to an even greater calamity, guaranteed. The dining room falls silent. The cheery atmosphere suddenly turns frosty. The catas catastrophic scene from my dream flashes. In the back of my mind. We can't keep going like the business as usual. If we do, we'll never manage to avoid that fate. Renegade Detective is absolutely right, but he clearly gets a kick out of inciting chaos. <laughs> my man. We can't rely on him to help us avert catastrophe. Conventional behaviors won't shape fate. You're going to need serious resolve if you intend to change it. This is it, Watto. Show me what you'll do. Oh, I gotta do something? Ugh, nobody said I had to do something. Why are you making me do stuff? I just want to chill. <laughs> I just want to chill. Okay. Conventional behaviors won't shape fate. You're going to need serious resolve if you intend to change it. I feel like I have like a, I don't know, a choice or something coming up. Okay. After receiving a proverbial push on the back from Holmes, I make up my mind. I've got practically zero confidence in myself, but if I want to save everyone, I'm going to take action. What everyone needs right now is hope. Suffice to say, they want to avoid being trapped here like the enemy wants. If I have to lie, then so be it. Oh my god, perjury. I've got to propose something that can break this dead. He really is, Sayara. Deadlock. But I have no plan in mind. And Holmes is staying silent on this. Can't she help me? No way. Maybe they'll pay attention if it's Holmes. Words they're listening to. Wait, tell them, Watto. At least she has, like, an excuse, you know, since she's, like, dead. Tagami had no excuse. Make up a bluff. It's a double-edged sword. If I'm caught, none of them will ever trust me again. But it's the only thing I can think of. Hold on a second. I just remembered something important. <laughs> I fight past the stammering and get my words out. <laughs> like, what? All eyes turn to me. My breath catches in my throat. It's over if they figure out I'm lying. I can't falter now. My body is moments away... Moments away from shaking, but I keep it under control and begin to speak. There's actually another hidden passage in the manor. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> They're gonna be so pissed when they can't find one. <laughs> like, how the fuck do you know this anyways? There's another... There, there's actually another hidden passage in the manor. We need to find it and get out of here as soon as possible. Guys, believe me. Silence. My outburst takes everybody by surprise. They all just sit there, staring at me in amazement. I guess I could say that, yeah, like, uh, what's-her-face? Ideal told me, maybe? Another hidden passage. And how would you, a fresh-faced recruit, be privy to this information? Information even a high-ranking detective such as myself is unaware of at that. It's laughable. Ridiculous. 
Holmes told me before she died. She said I should look for it if I was ever in real trouble. You heard this from my deal? Yeah, that's about, definitely the best way to to lie. Posh detective falls silent. <laughs> Still, I keep saying that throughout the whole game. <laughs> Not to mention, everyone here knows that the chief was fond of me. It's compelling enough, if only just... As predicted, the effect is immediate. What else did the chief say, incompetent? Um, uh, sorry, that was it. <laughs> how prudent, though of course she always was. In that case, how about we split into two teams and investigate? And why, pray tell, must we form teams at all? I am quite capable on my own. I'll have you know, I feel like Posh is just gonna block me every time we investigate. Because she got pissed working with Gourmet, but like, who does she like? You know what I mean? Because I'd like you all to... Because I'd like you all to install these surveillance cameras I made last night in key locations on the first and second floor. Techie takes out a large handful of small cameras from a cardboard box at his feet, arraying them on the table with Rowdy's help. Is this what you meant when you said you were going to prepare something last night? Of course, the culprit could be hiding in the manor, so I figured these would be indispensable. They're modified from the cameras on downtown smartphones, so they're not too durable, but I can use my tablet to monitor all the feeds. Downtown smartphones, as in multiple? <laughs> uh, no duh. I've got one for work, for friends, for gaming, and detectiving. You get the picture. Good to know they all came in handy. Jesus Christ, how many iPhones do you have? It'd be unnerving for any of us to not know where each of them is set up, so I'll share the locations with everyone as we go. Moving around with all 12 of us, with all 12 of us, would be difficult, though, so I'd like us to split into groups of six, one for each floor. Okay, that makes sense. And no complaints here. Me neither. Working in groups will be much safer, too. Magnificent as always, Sir Techie. Needless to say, you have my fullest cooperation. Monitoring the quartering Duke's movements will make it hard for him to strike. It's an excellent plan. The rest of the detectives follow downtown, and me with their own seals of approval. I dread it all, now I've been made to appear self-serving. Do you ha even have even a shred of self-awareness, princess, all about me? Hold your tongue, you bespeckled sheepdog. <laughs> okay, with the insult. If it is for the best that I tag along, then so be it. Despite Posh's huffing and puffing, she eventually acquires... Aquis Aquises? To Techie's suggestion. Some of the words in this game are really out there. <laughs> I don't know, they're so, like, I just never heard them before. After which, we split ourselves into two teams. After much discussion, I find myself on a team with these five detectives. Oh, hey, it's our buddies. I feel bad thinking it, but I'm relieved to not be working with Renegade and Posh. There's likely to be less trouble this way, but I want to work with Renegade. Wait, we're in charge of the first floor. Renegade, don't just wander off. It seems the other group, or at least workaholic, is already having trouble. His shouting continues as the second team exits calmly. As we climb the stairs to the second floor, Holmes calls out to me in a soft voice. What's he going to say when nobody finds another secret, <laughs> another secret exit? Nicely done with that trick you pulled to get everyone searching for a secret passage. If I didn't know better, I'd think I gave you the idea myself. I guess it went pretty well for something I made up on the spot. Obviously, I wasn't told anything about another hidden passage. It was simply a lie to give everyone a goal to work together on. At the very least, it'll prevent us from just dawdling about until catastrophe... Catastrophe strikes. This is the first step to preventing that tragedy. You've grown quite a glib tongue. The way you use me as a pretext to stir, steer the other detectives. Gee, thanks. Being forced to listen to your constant teasing must have paid off. Wonderful. Sarcasm is always a good sign. Keep that mindset and use it to sharpen your skills as a detective. Though, of course, your head will be on the chopping block if you don't manage to find a hidden passage. Uh, are you alright with that? Uh, yeah, my mind is set on this. If we do nothing, I'll die alongside the rest. Better to take a gamble and bank on the remote chance that there really is a secret way out. If we detectives don't act, how else are we going to prevent tragedies?
Looks like the guest rooms on the second floor have the same exact layout as the ones on the first. I remember seeing like, I think it was in the trailer, yeah, there was like traps and stuff. I guess we might start finding some of those in here. That'd be a pretty easy way to kill the other uh, detectives too. I assume the quartering duke is like one of us, you know what I mean? I'm assuming that. Oh yeah, I guess a lot of people are new, so they're like, uh, wait, is Ideal a ghost? Yeah, she's a ghost. I'm assuming you're okay with spoilers if you're watching the stream. The dimensions and decor are exactly the same. Do we get like the children group? The doors, however, are a bit crooked compared to those on the ground floor. Hence why they're hard to open, said the girl in response to downtown. It does kind of seem like that. It's like all the adults went into the first floor and all the kids went to the second floor. So TLDR, they just straight up weren't put in right. This place is like super swanky though. Why get sloppy with only the doors? Wait, hold up. Did you figure out all that just by looking? Damn, girl, that's crazy. Oh, hey, we do. Uh, yay, we have an adult supervisor. Bookie's abilities allow her to recall anything, even after a single glimpse. If she states as much, then it must be true. Abilities like some kind of superpower. No, total recall is rare, but not impossible. It's classified in medical fields as highly superior autobiographical memory or hyperthymesia. Okay. Anything after a single glimpse. Okay, she's kind of like Rose, I guess, then. Lady Bookworm, you are a marvel. Consider me astounded. So we all have superpowers. <sighs> um, she seems to be upset about something. Mind the volume, if you could. This ability requires complete concentration. Okay, no wonder. With that, the surveillance camera has been installed in the corner of the room. Let us proceed to the next. Hyperthemesia. I guess that does sound like a real thing, doesn't it? Oh man, my eye won't stop twitching. Ugh. I guess everybody else probably has like a special ability too. I guess we'll learn about it as we go on. We check the other rooms, and as Bookworm said, they all share the same arrangement. Aside from that, we find nothing of note. The only oddity is that the doors to every room are crooked in comparison to those on the first floor, a fact Bookworm had also pointed out. I was so busy searching for senior detective that I didn't realize yesterday, but they really are hard to open. It's impossible not to notice now. Okay, interesting. The doors to every room are crooked in comparison. Huh. wonder why that is. Pray tell, wherefore are these doors? Wherefore are these doors askew? They prove quite a challenge to open. Isn't this manor built on like a volcano or something? Maybe there was an earthquake and everything got all bent out of shape. Wait, the manor is built on a volcano. Sure does look like it on the uh, picture that they've shown. Apparently, I'm just telling you what I heard from the chief. In that case, why would this island of all places be chosen as the DA's headquarters? I mean, an island with a volcano on it is, like, mondo dangerous, so most people wouldn't want to live here, right? Plus, it's called, like, Morg Island. Morg's top topography is optimal for wandering off intruders, thus making it a prime hideout locale. Its inhospitality, though, is a double-edged sword. So the volcano gonna erupt while we're, like, on the island? I could see that happening in the game. Then the knave who slipped into our high command and slew the research facility members is quite formidable indeed. We must, we must needs, we must needs remain vigilant. Or perhaps they had no need to sneak it at all. Whatever the case, on to the next location. So dramatic. Ah! Oh my god, I almost dropped, dropped the remote. That'd be the second floor living room. And it is something strange as we follow the convoluted hallway towards the living room. Huh? Who left this door open? Oh, Jesus. We pass through the open door in another room. Apart from the lack of a fireplace, this layout is identical to the living room on the first floor. It seemed empty, so it was glossed over during yesterday's sweep, but upon closer inspection, it's obviously bizarre compared to the others. Ugh, this room is lame. Like, where's all the furniture? Just looking at it's a snooze fest. The furnishings consist solely of this table and these chairs, 
All of which are bolted to the floor. Are they bolted to the floor? What the fuck? <laughs> Why would you bolt them to the floor? What is going on back there, too? There's like a rope tied to the door to keep it open? Okay, that's weird. I was gonna say, it kind of seems like one of those like office, you know, rooms or whatever, but I guess we'll see. Given the size of this room, it's hard to imagine it'd be suitable for anything other than meetings. What purpose could it normally serve? Look over there, incompetent. The west-facing door is being held open. Yeah, I was like, that's weird. You're right, there's a rope connecting the handle to the wall, but what for? None of the others are like this. It could just be to keep it from closing, or perhaps there's another mechanism involved. I'm growing more and more confused. And on top of it all, the room had another stark difference to set it apart from the rest. Achoo! <laughs> she looks so sad. Are you good, Brookworm? What's with this room anyways? I feel like I'm in a walk-in fridge. Oh, it's just like super cold. Is there like a body or something in here? Oh, this room is so weird. So do I. Maybe it gets a lot of cross ventilation. Ugh, my legs are freezing up. What? Is there a hole in the floor or something? It's not anything I didn't really think of to keep like a body like, you know, I don't know, from decomposing or something. She's right. It feels like there's wind circulating around my feet. This room is drafty, and the manor is at a high altitude. That would explain why it's especially cold in here. If we investigate in these conditions for too long, it might end up affecting her health. Ah! Doleful, what's wrong? Are you okay? Sorry, I've been feeling nauseous ever since we entered this room. Doleful's face is losing its color. He looks even paler than back when we were attacked by the black machine. Is the cold getting to him, or is he sensing some kind of danger? Yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like that's what he's sensing. Hey, Mystic, wasn't there a wood stove downstairs? Why don't we bring it up here? An excellent idea. Nothing good will come of investigating. At these temperatures, let us retrieve it at once. Looks like a hibachi grill or something. <laughs> a bet. Like, a bet. I love how she does, like, all the Gen Z, like, uh, the Gen Z, like, slang. A bet. <laughs> like, for real. Why keep the door open when it's this cold? Whoever runs this place and has a lower IQ than the temperature in here. She's gonna be saying, like, no cap soon or something. Then allow me to remedy the situation. What the? Armor approaches the west-facing door, then brings his hand down. On the rope, connecting the handle to the wall, severing it. Okay. His cutting edge is as impressive as always. Just what is that armor made of? There. The door may now be sealed. This should lessen the chill. Okay. Armor makes his triumphant proclamation, then begins to close the door. But not one moment later... Wait! This is giving me a bad feeling! Yeah, I was like, I feel like it's like an Indiana Dro Jones trap or something, you know? Like, you pull something, and then it, like, causes something else. <laughs> Ah! Thank God we have Doleful here. Doleful sprinting towards armor. No! Yes! Please save armor! Thank God! Thank God! Armor tilting his head, the door creaking shut. It seems I see it all in slow motion as sparks explode in my mind. And then right before my eyes... Uh, brain blast. Oh, shit! Ah! Oh, fuck. Wait. Doleful is pierced by a bed of slender spikes. Wait, this is our vision, right? Or is he actually dead? He crumbles limply into the ground, blood dripping from his mouth like an open faucet. Oh, Jesus. I don't know. I don't... Uh, I'm like, this is... This is a dream. This is my... This is my That's a Raven moment, right? Right? I don't think so, though. I think it might be happening. Jesus Christ. At least armor is saved. Once again, I'm forced to watch as I lose yet another friend. No, no, don't fool enough the gay boyfriend. No! Okay, thank God it was a vision. <laughs> I snap back into focus and see Doleful standing in front of me, unharmed. Incompetent? Doleful's safe and sound. What was that? What's going on? What did I just see? You've predicted a future tragedy with your... Oh god, I forgot how to pronounce that. Quick, Watto! Save Doleful! Not good. Dazed, I dart across the floor and shove Doleful. Ah! Doleful and I topple to the ground. In the very next moment... Oh shit, there they are! Sharp spikes shoot out of the floor beside us. If they hadn't pushed him, Doleful would have been impaled. Oh, thank god, we saved him though. That was so scary. The way I just... Oh no, oh my god. Oh my god. God damn it. Ah! Why? I need to push this in. Oh my gosh. The stupid speed run thing. It goes so fast. 
Very next moment, beside us. If I hadn't pushed him, okay. It didn't... Okay, I don't think it was as much, as fast, or didn't go through that much. As much as it looked like. What artifice is this? The moment I closed the door, spikes sprung for the from below! I don't know, but obviously you shouldn't have done that. Go open the door and let's bounce already. Forgive me, but no matter how much force I muster, I refuse to budge. It's like, maybe if I just, like, push this in, it won't happen. Because, yeah, it accidentally pushed, like, my keyboard thing. I accidentally pushed it. I'm afraid to get twist the handle on the east side of the room, but to no avail. Our situation is getting more dire by the second. Okay, it wasn't as bad. It wasn't just one time. More spikes are popping up from the edge. Oh, they're still going up? Oh, fuck. You getting, like, closer or something? She on the table? No, nope. <laughs> actually, they look taller than the table. Never mind. Double's right. Spikes are burning, bursting up in ranks from the western side of the room. At this rate, we'll soon run out of space, and that'll be the end of us. We have to do something, but what? Holmes, what should we do? If this keeps up, none of us are going to make it. Tell them, Watto. Now, I want you to. I want you to give me advice. Get a hold of yourself, Watto, or they'll catch you talking to me, and they're gonna think you're crazy. Why worry about that right now? It's <laughs> like screaming at like a corner with nothing. And they're like, uh, Watto, are you okay, buddy? Why worry about that right now? This is life or death here. Exactly, it's life or death. That's why I'm telling you to remain calm. Uh, and tell them! Holmes draws her face so close to mine that her noses nearly touch, shocking me into silence as she continues speaking. If you lose your composure now, you won't be able to avoid this tragedy. Play close, pay close attention to Mystic Detective. Despite the rest of us panicking, Mystic and Bookworm remain calm and collected. Bookie, what changes have occurred in this room? There are gaps in the floor- <laughs> Fucking gaps in the floorboard for the spikes to emerge from. It's- <laughs> How many gaps in the floorboard are there in this mansion? That might be why the room is so cold, the girl said, relaying her observations. Okay. I see, just like the chandelier. This trap is not single use. Rather, it can be reset and triggered repeatedly. Yeah, it does seem like I guess that's why I'm like the Quarter Duke's gotta be like among us, right? Because he's like trying to kill all of us one by one. Granted, I guess our like um vision showed all of us dying like at the same time. In which case, the arrangement of the furniture in the center must hold some particular meaning. Mister takes bookworm by the hand and starts giving us orders. Bookie, everyone, get on top of the table and chairs. I mean, it looks like the spikes are taller than that, but maybe they just don't go there. But if we stand in the middle of the room, the spikes will reach us in no time. Trust in me. This will save us. Of that, I'm certain. Ah. Uh, we all exchange glances before making up our minds. Gaps in the floorboard. Na 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 na. For Mystic's orders, we scramble to climb the chairs, climb the chairs, settling together on the narrow table. Oh, I like downtown's little buns. I wanted to do something like that with my hair. Spikes spread out from the floor at a rapid pace, steadily heading our way. They're like, <laughs> almost getting murdered. I'm like, oh my god, her hair is so cute. This won't work. The table and chairs aren't enough to stop that kind of momentum. We're all about to get skewered. I can't look. Unable to take it, I close my eyes, but then... It's alright to be afraid, but don't look away! Mr. Detective speaks from beside me, and my eyes shoot open. Only a reckless fool doesn't fear death. But to avert one's gaze out of fear is, above all, a fruitless endeavor. To become a true detective and competent, you must press on the face of mortality. For a detective must always conquer their fear of death. Conquer my fear of death? Only in doing so can the truth be ascertained. Now keep your eyes open and behold. That must be so freaky, dude. Do -do 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 -do. The spikes are in front of our noses at this point, leaping out with so much force that I can feel them part my hair. My body is instinctively my body instinctively lurches towards the exit on the eastern end of the room. The art in this game looks so good. Visions of yesterday's victims flash spontaneously in my mind. People die. Everyone does. No matter how heroic they are or how storied and accomplished. 
I'd never been able to confront this obvious truth before. I'd go so far as to say that no one living a normal life truly understands. How can they? It just goes to show how little ordinary people have to deal with human mor mortality. Dee -dee -dee. Oh, oh snap, the spikes were almost here. Maybe I should text down text down my will or something. <laughs> my god. I give my TikTok login <laughs> to my mom. Do not utter such words of ill importance, Lady Downtown. Rest assured, should this table succumb to the spikes, I shall shield us all. It's all right. I don't sense any more threats. It'll be okay. It has to be. Around me, everyone voices their concerns. We could all be impaled in any in a matter of moments. Even after all the carnage the des detectives have seen, it's only natural for them to be afraid. And yet, no one tries to flee. They all have the courage they need to overcome their fears. I want to be brave like all the others, but I have to find this courage on my own. I refuse to run. I dig my nails in. And will my legs to stop shaking, then tor turn towards Mystic and speak in a clear voice. Mystic, sorry for letting my anxiety get the best of me. <laughs> sorry for being anxious in this situation like this. That's so lame of me. I won't bury my head in the sand again. I'll face my fear all the way to the end. I guess as a detective, you do need to be like extra, I don't know, vigilant or something, but still. There's a spark in your eyes. I can see now why Holmes was fond of you. However, the truly terrifying part is yet to come. Hold your gaze to the very last moment. I will. It's like, is this gonna keep going forever since we cut the rope? <laughs> I was like, do we, have, do we need to attach that again or something? The cold, lifeless spikes stand right before us. The next place they strike will be right through the table, skewering us along with it. But at that moment, the inexplicable occurs. The spikes skip past the table. No way, what is this? Some kind of magic trick? I'm trying to think of like what the purpose of, I don't know, like, you know, bulleting or like, you know, what was that, like bolting the table the floor is with the spikes? Um, I guess just so you know where to go exactly where the spikes are gonna hit, I guess so. Sir Mystic, are you perchance a genuine practitioner of the arcane arts? I bid you instruct me in your secrets to spike evasion. There's no such thing. Use your brain for once, said the girl, profusely irritated at the moronic excuse of a detective. As they banter, the spikes continue piercing up in every spot, except the table and chairs. <laughs> Damn, those things are going on for a while. Bam! Ching, ching. In a few moments, the entire room is crowded with spikes. The only exception being where we currently sit. These chairs and this table are the only safe zone. I shudder as I recall how we almost ran to the corners of the room. Yeah, for real. If we hadn't followed Mystic's lead, we would... I feel like, couldn't they technically have gone to, like, the window sill area? There's, like, literally a little sitting area over there. I guess they all wouldn't have fit there, but that seems pretty safe. That's probably where I would have gone. It's a miracle that we made it out. The only question I have is, how do we... How do we know where to go? Incompetent detective, can you guess how I surmised that this location would be out of harm's way? You guys all trying to like tutor me or something? Um, uh, well, I haven't the slightest idea. Doleful notices how hard I'm struggling to answer and whispers into my ear. There's an easy clue if you approach it with a cool head. The biggest hint was the lack of furniture. The lack of furniture, what do you mean? Let's say this room was fully furnished and the trap was activated, filling the room with spikes. What would happen? The furniture would all get destroyed. I mean, those things were coming out with a lot of force from the gaps in the floorboard. Oh, wait, I get it. That's why there's no furniture except for the chairs and the table, that is. There you go. Now let's take it from the opposite angle. There must be a reason why the chairs and table don't break when the trap is triggered. Yeah, because they're bolted in place. Okay. They're also bolted down to the floor. That means it's important to note that they have to remain in this exact position. So from that, you can assume that the spikes won't hit where the chairs and tables are. Well done, doleful detective. As you said, if you think about it calmly, it's hardly a difficult problem to solve. Most, however, fearing death would flee in a panic towards the corners, leaving them trapped with no option but to await their demise. 
Egg, what the F? Who does, whoever designed this manor has got, like, serious issues. Sir Mystic, your nimble insight saved our lives. A thousand grammarcies, my good man. Grammarcies? Think nothing of it. It is, after all, human nature to protect your companions, is it not? But remember this, the trepidation within the hearts of men often obscures the facts. I, too, was once in prison by it. Committing a grave error as a result. Oh my god, trauma dab! Thus do I now hold my knowledge as to better face the supernatural and occult. Okay, interesting. It's just like fear. I guess that's why he's all about like, you have to face these situations with no fear at all. I guess I can see why he was being so hard on, um, you know, incompetent too. Because I was like, I feel like it's pretty understandable to be scared in a situation like this. But if you're a detective, you got to be in a lot of situations like this. Especially if you're an anime detective. So you got to learn how to think calmly and actually like solve stuff. For every deadlock, there is a ray of hope to be found. It is vital that a detective have the will to defy fear and pursue the, pursue, <laughs> pursue the truth. Ag. In time, the spikes recede into their cavities beneath the floor, the gaps in the floorboard, and the room returns to how it was before. It looks as though nothing had happened at all. No one would believe me if I told them there were spikes ready to burst out from the floor. Everyone heartily, I do cry you mercy. <laughs> what are you saying? Arm leaves the floor and prostrates himself before us. <laughs> he's such a dork. Sorry, he's not going to cut it, Tin for Brains. Quit being such a reckless bozo for once. Quit being a himbo for two seconds. Hey, come on. Go easy on the guy. You've seen him. Armor closed the door out of concern for our well-being. Let's just leave it at that. This rust bucket gets away with everything. <laughs> just because you guys simp for him. Just because you guys keep coddling him. Screw your bro code and show him some tough love. God. The three of us stand in a row before the peeved off downtown, head bowed in apology. Nothing but imbeciles wall to wall, the girl said, glowering at the men with scorn in her eyes. Come on, he was just trying to help us. Mind your words, it is a splendid quality to have the strength to speak so casually. After such a close encounter with the Reaper. That Holmes. That Holmes, it would seem she's left us quite the parting gift, hasn't she? We use our D-pads to notify the other detectives about the trap in the second floor living room. Oh yeah, texting. I want to see texting. Also, per downtown suggestion, we rig the door so that it will stay open on its own. What are you what are you digging what are you digging into the floor? I'm putting a wooden block in here so we can use this as a door stop. You know, so it stops the door from closing. Duh. Yeah. Okay. This seems like it might be important to some kind of case or something in the future. I do kind of wonder, like, <clears throat> hopefully in the future, like, because, like, the first case was fun, but we didn't, like, figure out who did it, you know? We still don't know who killed Senior Detective. I hope it's not that, like, I don't know, we just, like, solve the mystery of the case, but we don't find out who the culprit is. It's, like, I feel like that does kind of make the most sense, because I think it's just, like, one of us that's a murderer, though. Murderer, though, you know what I mean? I guess, like, I don't know. I guess we'll just find out who, like the soul killer is like at the end of the game but i was like man i do like having like a new culprit for every chapter and stuff like that you know what i mean she shoves a chunk of wood armor i'd shaved into a cube into the hole part of the block juts out of it preventing the door from shutting it's pretty sturdy so long as it stays put even a strong shove wouldn't close the door this should keep things safe I get it. This is way simpler than securing it with a rope. I guess I could totally see somebody killing someone else by just like, oopsie, knock the, you know, knock the wood piece over. Uh, go me, right? I've got tons of younger siblings, so we'd always wedge doors open like this. Helps keep them from smacking into stuff. Also, something that like has been bothering me so much about downtown. It's like just such a stupid little thing, but her nails remind me so much of Junko's nails because Junko had those like long red nails too. Every time I see her hand up, I just think of Junko. Oh, thank you, David. Last night I watched a girl get her nose pierced for her birthday. And in related news, I'm very good. Oh God. <laughs> I'm very good at darts. Oh, God, David. What did you do? <laughs> Have a good stream. Love you. Thanks so much for stopping by, David. Appreciate, uh, always appreciate the laughs and uh, appreciate seeing you at the streams. Oh, man, that's so funny. Go me, right? I've got tons of younger siblings, so we'd always wedge doors open with stuff like this. Helps keep them from smacking into stuff. Of course, it means I get, like, zero privacy, though. It is true that children often injure themselves on doorknobs. I find this to be an excellent solution. 
Uh, you never know what life experiences may come in handy. We ensure the door won't close and set off the trap, then leave the room behind. Process of elimination. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. I guess that makes makes sense. Uh, Livewire. Thanks for stopping by the stream, by the way. After we finish setting up the surveillance cameras, we decide to have dinner in the dining room. Once again, we gather around the refectory table, salivating in anticipation of gourmet's cooking. Techie, the man of the hour, takes the seat of honor. His PC is connected to his tablet, and he clatters away at the keyboard. He appears to be setting things up so that all the cameras can be monitored from the tablet. My curio curiosity gets the best of me, so I go over to see what he's doing. How's it going? Does it look like the cameras are going to function all right? Uh, yeah, in fact, the one in the entrance hall is already operational. Take a look. Oh, God, this is going to be creepy. We're going to be seeing people doing, like, sketchy shit in these cameras. Wasn't there, like, uh, I think it was Yurchin to Die that, yeah, had, like, the cameras and stuff, uh, like, watching. Like, I don't know, we'd see people do, like, just sketchy shit. I'm trying to, like, explain it without spoiling anything. Techie takes his tablet off the table and shows it to me. Ah, uh, who's a little iPad kid? <laughs> Techie does give the most iPad kid vibes. There on the display is the entrance hall, the manor's sole means of entry and exit. With this, we should be able to prevent the culprit from sneaking out of here. Dang, this is one killer setup you got here. Bet you can make a transmitter so we can radio back to HQ. What do you say? That's beyond my capabilities. I just combined the phone's recording functions with our D-pad's comm system. It was nothing special, really. So modest security cams, instant footage. I can never make stuff like this. Instant noodles, now that's something I excel at. Aw, oh, come off it, will ya? This food looks like instant noodles to ya. I mean, get a load of this feast. Rowdy's right. While there are fewer dishes than last night, everything is brand new and they all look delicious. Man, I wish I could cook. The crystal clear soup in particular is exquisite with its flavorful seafood stock. <laughs> the techie slander. You know, it's not slander if it's the truth. The flavorful broth, the melt-in-your-mouth fish, it's delicious. I'm amazed you made this with so few ingredients and seasonings. Oh, stop with the praise or I'll turn as red as a beet. I'll have you know that this is a very simple dish. There was plenty of fish in the freezer, so I went ahead and simmered it nice and slow. The trick to a delicious meal isn't being picky about ingredients. It's patient. Patience, thoroughness, time, and effort. That's why I suck at cooking. Just like in an investigation. I have no patience. So nobody get frustrated over not finding the hidden passage today, okay? Upping the heat on a soup you've labored over will only spoil it. Uh, um, I'm totally down to be locked up in here a few more days if it means we get to eat like this every night. Uh, likewise, uh, the gang's all here and the party never stops. It's almost like we're on vacation. Oh, I love it here. Here on vacay with my besties. Just kicking it. I have some decorum, you two, especially you downtown. You nearly died in a trap today. Then there's a chandelier and who knows what else. It's far too dangerous here. Hence why we must find that hidden passage and escape pronto. Uh, get that stick out of your butt, Poshy. Some casual chit chat might bring up a few good ideas for finding that hidden passage. Like quit being so serious and chill. You know that word, right? Um, chill. Humph, how simple life would be if idle chatter produced quality thoughts. Oh, uh, well, I, for one, think downtown might be onto something. What, please? Enough with your jest. He's just like, I just want to see the chaos. That's why I want to stay here. But aren't you aware, Posh? Solving cases via conversations is how downtown has moved up the ranks. It's her primary weapon, so to speak. I guess that makes sense. And she's got, like, the TikTok clout. She can, like, I don't know, get information from people. Conversation, a weapon, is this is this meant to be some sort of jab against high society? Not at all. I'm merely stating the facts. Answer me this, incompetent. When you need to think, which works better for you? Hiding away someplace quiet or traversing busy streets? Um, somewhere quiet. I can't collect my thoughts if I'm walking around, let alone through a busy area. I thought as much, but the data shows that many distinguished business leaders prefer the latter, livelier option. I was going to say, I feel like I kind of think better when I'm, like, walking, you know what I mean? 
not necessarily in like a busy area, but just, you know, kind of like, you know, <laughs> like somewhere, just kind of like doing something else. I think I'm just like, I don't know if it's like ADD where you kind of like need to do like two things at once or something, or is that just like attention span? No, that, I think that might, maybe it's ADD. I can't tell. Really? Why would that be? I simply cannot comprehend. Explain it in nobleman's terms, if you please. She's so uppity. It's because it provides your brain with the appropriate amount of stimulation. Obviously, background noise will distract you if you need to concentrate. But if you want to broaden your mind, too much focus can work against you. It's as Renegade says, the brain is most active with new stimuli. So continuous engagement, i.e. talking, makes it easier to develop fresh ideas. Yeah. The more we converse, the easier it is for each of us to share what we know. It facilitates an otherwise neglected exchange of information. In fact, downtown is the third fastest in the DA at solving cases. Only a founding detective. What kind of name is Vidoc Q? That has been bothering me. Vidoc Q and Ideal, our de facto chief, exceed her. Okay. It's like, I don't know. He seems like he's really important, you know what I mean? Downtown deepens her interactions with others, both her benefit and both to her benefit and theirs. This social deduction is highly regarded within the DA. To think so much thought lies behind that method, there is far more to you than meets the eye. I mean, it's not like I put that much thought into it. My head just goes into sleep mode if I if there's <laughs> if there's no tea to spill. That is so true, Queen. Me too. You know on mysteries, a side character will say what evs and something clicks into place. That's why I prefer group chats over going solo. <laughs> I need constant tea spilling. Oh my god, same bestie. <laughs> Hum. Vidoc Q's name is pronounced without the Q. So Vidoc, okay. Oh, like, I guess Q sometimes can be used for like a K sound too. Hum, social deduction is it? I return to my seat. Armor sits next to me, deep in thought. I too must devise a unique deduction technique of my own. Well, if the idea is to stimulate your brain, you definitely need help in that department. Am I right, boys? Maybe some light exercise could help clear your mind. Oh, uh -huh. workout deduction. Magnificent! I shall put it to the test this very night. Just remember not to focus too much on the exercise, or you'll forget to do any actual thinking. But to train is to battle against the self. Would it not prove fatal to ruminate on idle thoughts in the heat of combat? <laughs> Um, if that's the way you see it, maybe you just aren't cut out for thinking. <laughs> it's okay, Armor, I get it. Thinking's hard, I, I get you. It's a bit tricky to get right. I worked a case with downtown before, but she's actually pretty attentive to her surroundings. You could say, you could say she has a knack for picking up on social cues. Anyways, it's obvious she excels at talking to people without bothering them. You talking about downtown? Yeah. Just very, uh, conversational. Come to think of it, when I reproached myself after we alluded to the spike trap, she chided me for it, preventing me from go growing over dispirited. Oh, she's just kind of like good at uh, veering people in the right direction. Interesting. She also scolded us back when Holmes died. That's downtown's way of being kind. I'm sure of it. Okay, that makes sense. Just has like a good way with words. It's kind of like Sundar Sundaray in a way. Not like Sundaray, but like... Uh, she doesn't want to be like just super straight up like, oh no, don't discourage yourself, armor. Instead, she just kind of like, you know, changes the subject or like moves the conversation in a way to where, uh, I don't know, just a better uh, thing. Right about that, I'm just going to continue, come out and say it since it's you incompetent. But Danhound's friend was actually killed by the quartering duke. Oh, that's why she gets weirdly fixated on con camaraderie. Uh-oh. The quartering duke killed her friend? Jesus. Uh, cough, cough! No trauma dummy at the table! Uh. Someone's coughing echoes in the dining room. Bookworm is covering her mouth, looking pale in the face. Ah, uh, she gets sick from being in the room. We don't have to stay in there for a long time, you know, because the spikes. Mystic stands behind her, patting her back with concern. Are you alright, Bookie? They look nothing alike to be related, but it does seem like he's her dad. I guess maybe like a stepdad or something too. You have just endured a distressing experience. There's no need to push yourself if you are unable to eat. 
it's fine. After all, the effort that went into this food, it would be a shame not to enjoy it, said the girl, taking up her spoon. Pathetically, I might add. There's no need to put on a tough front with me, even in the Detective Alliance. Your powers of rec recollection are superb. Yesterday's gruesome scene. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's kind of like the same thing, yeah, as like Rose and like uh, the spare time. Like, would be a really good ability, but for stuff like this, I feel like, uh, I don't know, it'd be so like mo much more traumatic, you know what I mean? Like, there's certain things, you know, you see in life and you're just like, God, I kind of want to forget that, you know what I mean? But like, if you had photographic memory, you would remember like every detail of it, like super, I don't know, well, it'd just be, it'd be really messed up. I would hate it. I feel like I would be seeing those like every time I close my eyes or something. Yesterday's gruesome scene, today's deadly trap. It's a small wonder that you're at your limit after witnessing such horrors in quick succession. Mystic gives a gentle smile as he takes Bookworm's trembling hands into his own. I do. So far, I kind of feel like Downtown's going to die next. Maybe it is just partially because I put her in the thumbnail. I feel like I jinxed her, but also, I don't know, learning more. Like, we're learning more about her personality and also about her past. I'm like, damn, this just feels like a death flag. Oh, God. But we'll see. We'll see. She gives him a silent nod before the two of them stand. Our apologies for leaving early, but we will be retiring for the night. You may leave our plates where they are. I'll return to clean them up. Okay. Is Bookworm okay? The food hasn't wasn't poisoned. What? Oh my god, dude, do not say that. Nothing of the sort, to assure you. To be brief, it is an adverse effect of her memory. An adverse effect? I shall explain at another time. Again, our apologies for disturbing you all. Please continue dining. With that, they leave the room. Everyone's minds must be on Mystic and Bookworm. Our chatter dies down as we eat in silence. Afterward, we can all pitch in to clean up before going our separate ways. Another thing that's kind of weird I was just thinking about um, is the fact that, like, okay, so, you know, we were having, like, brain blasts or whatever, like, before we got our power, our power from Ideal... It's just kind of weird that she's like, oh, I'm giving you this power. But it's like, we already kind of had the power. It wasn't like fully unlocked, but I don't really know if it was like really her ability was given to us. More so like an ability we've had for a while, but like just to know how to awaken or how to awaken. I don't know. Just kind of something I was thinking about. Because yeah, he was getting those brain blasts before. And even when I got that bad ending, like uh, kind of went straight into like the next route and he was like... Uh, Oh shit, that was a bad, like, that was a bad trip. Better not go to the research facility. So, I don't know, it's kind of interesting that they're trying to explain it away with, like, oh, I'm giving you the ability now. It's like, girl, I kind of already had that ability. I don't know. Oh, incompetent, are you busy after this? <laughs> Gourmet calls to me right before I leave. Techie is with her, balancing his tablet and laptop on his knees. These two make a bit of an odd couple. I thought about taking a look at the study, but I don't have anything really planned. What's up? We want to set up the ta tablet in the living room so we can check the security cams, but we need one of the guys to help us move the furniture. Armor and Dolphal both refused. They were worried they would inadvertently break my electronics. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, they might have a point there. I'd be happy to help. That definitely does seem like both of them. I like I like Doleful and Armor's little friendship too. It's cute. I feel like me, Doleful, and Armor kind of have like a little gang. A little gang. I feel like Downtown's kind of in the gang, but she's probably about to die. <laughs> Let's be real. I can picture Armor snapping the tablet with his brute strength or Doleful tripping over and ripping through the cords. How cold. You ought to extend that invitation to me, the best boy. We exchange a glance at the unexpected words from this equally unexpected person. I want to bond, damn it! You want to you want to help too, Renegade? <laughs> Look at how happy I am! I'm even doing the Kamida pose. Why the surprise? Didn't I say my hobby is volunteering back when we first met? Oh, thank you, Kiryu. We have a few jinx down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. If I did, but like, I'm gonna die so far. You didn't hear it from me. I didn't say anything about slang though. So in my defense, I've not said anything about slang. So she might be okay. I can't help but I can't help but help when I see someone struggling. Oh, that's so me. That's literally my personality. It's in my nature. In fact, it's the reason. <laughs> You're so full of shit. 
It's because you're like a murderer. In fact, it's the reason I became a detective. It's not because I'm a murderer and I needed to get like a, you know, special privileges or things. It's striking how insincere he sounds. As usual, I can't get a read on him, but ma many hands make light work, so it can't hurt to say yes. I don't know about that, Chief. I kind of want to see his full drip. What's going on in this outfit? Got like the... Okay, so it's like a... A turtleneck. I feel like it's like a turtleneck, but it's probably like short sleeve. So like a short sleeve turtleneck. Got like the belt, the black pants. Okay, I see. I see. It looks good. Well then, okay, let's head to living. I'll help as well. I do have some seniority here after all. Workaholic, you're still here? I reflexively jump back, surprised to see a workaholic next to me. I've been here the whole time. It <laughs> seems I don't make much of an impression. It kind of stings, actually. I feel like workaholic's a little sus. I don't know. Sorry, but yeah, we'd appreciate the hand. Ah, uh, tea! So many nice young men helping out. This will make setting up the tablet a breeze. Thanks, everybody. Let's head to the living room. Oh, yeah, of course the heels. I forgot about the heels that Renegade had on, too. That's... Of course, what pulls together the outfit. I think he has, like, Junko nails, too. Like, the red long nails. Gourmet pushes Techie's wheelchair out of the room. I start following after him, but when my hand touches the door... Don't worry, I'm not up to anything. Promise. <laughs> it looks so sketch. So you say, but talk is cheap. I sense a palpable tension between workaholic and renegade. Did something happen earlier this afternoon? I'm curious, but also too cowardly to ask. So I continue on to the living room. I feel like, I don't know, like, Renegade's obviously a sketch, but he's, like, upfront sketch. I feel like workaholic, there's just kind of something off about him. I can't really, well, I feel like the main reason is just because he was, like, so hardcore, like, sussing me or, like, suspecting me for, like, the first case. Like, I just felt like he was, like, I understood why he suspected me, but he was being so, like pushy about it maybe he is just really close with senior but the fact that he was so close with senior makes him even more sketchy because that old man was up to something all surveillance cameras are in position thank you for your help everyone <laughs> the light aren't clapping <laughs> having rearranged the living room furniture installed the cables and set up the tablet on the table our work is finally done it's now 9 p.m. The room's layout made wiring things difficult. So the process wound up taking much longer than we had anticipated. The process of elimination? Oh! How do we view what the cameras are recording? You can use a tablet on the table for that. Okay, so you can record different areas. Here, there is an overview of the surveillance feed on the home screen. Just tap one to expand the video. Oh. God, I thought I clicked that button again. See? Oh, Rowdy, combat training in our room again, I see. Oh, uh, we can't hear anything, but look how hard she's going at it. Classic Rowdy. Okay, she's doing like, I don't, karate. Oh, wait, is Renegade 17? Really? I thought he was like 25. Wait, how old is he? Really? That's wild. Why? God, freaking, freaking Japan, dude. <laughs> they have to make everybody a teenager. Why can't we have adults in games for once? Thank you, Funny Man Joan. Renegade got me Renegade for Armor Detective. Right, Detective's jacket alone is a massive sleigh. <laughs> I can, I, she does have a good jacket, too. I gotta, I gotta say. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate ya. There's no sound. Correct. I couldn't get clean audio out of the smartphone's speakers, so I gave up on it. It's a bit of a relief to hear that it isn't recording sound. It means I can speak with Holmes in my room without anyone finding out. <laughs> gonna see? <laughs> gonna see me? It's gonna be like a Death Note when Elle was watching like Light in his room, except... Am I just gonna be like... What are you talking about? I'm just gonna be like talking with... Uh talking with her like be like who the fuck is he talking to you know i just talk to myself you know <laughs> it's a bit of a relief to hear that it isn't recording the sound it means i can speak with holmes in my room without anybody finding out yeah if you guys know the ages of the characters y'all can uh let me know i was like is he seven i guess they might say later i don't think i really um i don't think i really count that as a spoiler especially since it'll help with like you know just like i don't know shipping and figuring out if it's like weird to ship characters or not you know what i mean 
Great work, Techie. This means nearly every room is covered by a camera, doesn't it? But yeah, they said some of the ages. I know, like, Rowdy's super young. She's, like, 13 or 14 or something. Downtown's, like, 15. Me and then Doleful are 17. Armor's, like, 20, I think. Workaholic's, like, 28. He looks... I don't know. I feel like he looks older than 28. <laughs> I feel like it's such a pan for you. They're, like... You know, once you get past, like, 17, you're just an old... You're an old person. <laughs> I'll loop in the other detectives regarding this update via iPad. I guess he could look older too, just because he's like the stress of being like a uh, detective, you know what I mean? Hopefully these cameras will be enough of a t deterrent to prevent any further casualties. I don't think they've said Techie's age, but he's probably like 13 or something too. It should, seeing as even our rooms are being monitored, trying to go after anyone now would basically be confessing that you're the Duke. All right, thanks for the reassurance, Incompetent. Techie, you've been so distracted by your work. You've hardly eaten. Why don't you head to the dining room and I'll fix a meal for you? If you really don't mind, then yes, please. Thank you so much. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> don't we just eat, though? Gourmet? Oh, yeah, Ideal's also 17. That makes sense. I figured she was, like, the same age as us. So I guess almost all of us are, like, uh, 17. Gourmet pushes Techie's wheelchair, and the two of them head towards the dining room. I decided that this is a good time as I need to take a shower, but just as I turn to go, I remember that uh, Ideal's always watching. Always watching. Oh, nope. Renegade detective blocks my path. He flashes his iconic shady smile. If they made him 17, it was just so people could ship him with the main character. <laughs> it was just the yaoi bait. <laughs> so about senior detectives killer what do you make of it workaholic steps in front of renegade detective as if to shield me he answers in a cold voice that betrays his usual calm demeanor that's rather abrupt of you to ask sorry but i have no comment to give at the moment oh come on let's be fun let's talk let's spill some tea why not shouldn't fellow detectives share their insights I'd agree, but for that, I'd agree, but for that bad habit of yours, even after finding the truth, you continue to pick it apart. Do you do away with that, and we can talk. Oh, thank you, bless Bane. Let's see, this amount of top detectives being below age is really just a product of watching too many true crime documentaries. Well, I guess, eh, I guess so. I guess the younger gener- the young- the young people- <laughs> God, I'm such an old lady. I really am, like, 82 now, aren't I? The, I guess it's just a product, you know? The young people really do love the true crime. <laughs> I guess that's maybe what you mean. I guess we'll see. I'd agree, but for that bad habit of yours, even after finding the truth, you continue to pick it apart. Do with that, and then we can talk. How insulting. You wound me. You wound, wound me. Come on, guys. Let's get along. It's hard to believe how sour the mood got the moment Gourmet and Techie left. It seems the unease I sensed earlier on wasn't just my imagination. Like I thought, something must have happened between these two. What do you think, incompetent? Is the quartering duke really among us? Uh, among us? I can't say anything for sure yet, but I want to believe he isn't. Hmm. <laughs> uh, you want to believe, do you? And why is that? Well, we're all on the same team, for one thing. I don't like the idea of having to suspect my fellow detectives. <laughs> Such a pure uh, answer makes me t I hate how he says that, dude. <laughs> There's something... S I, th I don't like the way he says that. <laughs> makes me tingle. But don't you find it strange? It's like his catchphrase. Don't you find it strange? Those of us who were summoned to this island have close to nothing in common. Strange. He's right, there's no consistency in our ages, genders, or ranks within the organization. It's like, why is everybody a minor? <laughs> why are all the detect the best detectives in the world 15? I'd assume the group was assembled for its diversity and range of abilities, but now that he mentions it, it is a bit odd. We don't really have that many adults. We have, like, gourmet, I assume. I don't think they've set her age. I would assume 25 or something, but that's what I assumed about this guy. Workaholic gourmet. Um, Mystic? We got like three supervisors. <laughs> then armor, but armor. I, he, there's not really much going on. <laughs> not really much going on in the brain, so <laughs> I don't think he counts. Thank you, Funny Man Jones. What is your icon, by the way? Is it like the the Michelin Man, but with like a human face? 
<laughs> I've been wondering that. Bookworm read a Percy Jackson book and was made into detective. <laughs> Honestly, legit. <laughs> Canon. Thank you for the uh, donation, by the way. I assume the group was assembled for its diversity and range of abilities, but now that he mentions it, it is a bit odd. No, guess as to why we were all chosen. Workaholic detective, you were in charge of keeping touch with the Holmes, so you must have heard something. If I had, I would have told everyone. <laughs> Armor's trying. <laughs> It's like, guys, he's got like literally the 15 year old like hyping him up and trying to like keep him in check. I don't think he should be counted as like an adult supervisor. I don't think he's gonna help us all that much. <laughs> Thank you, Gabe. Doesn't it say the character's ages in the game? Like with their character bios or something like that? No, it's weird. It only says my age. Like literally, it's so weird. It says my age, but that's literally it. Everything else is just like the ranks. I don't know why, but yeah, that's just how it is for whatever reason. But thank you for the donation. Appreciate you. The initial selection was carried out by Vidoc, the founder of our organization. I doubt even the chief, let alone us, knew much about it. I can see it being like one of us is like the, I don't know, we're, one of us is the quartering duke, but we're also Vidoc for some reason, you know what I mean? I can see it being like a double thing. Cause has anybody met Vidoc before? Do we know what he looks like? Oh, I see. Well, that settles it for now. Or is he just like L or something? Though I did discover that there's something we all have in common while ruminating through the documents in the study. Something we all have in common. Are y'all getting ads? What? That's so weird. I'm not pressing the ad button. Is YouTube just doing that now? That's so strange. Interesting. I keep seeing y'all mention getting ads, but I was like, I'm not pressing. I promise I'm not pressing the ad button. I guess YouTube's just doing that now. Upon my ask, <laughs> hope y'all don't get, it's gonna be like, right when somebody dies, YouTube just pushes an ad break. <laughs> You're like, sorry. <laughs> Upon my asking, running a detective withdraws a notebook from his pocket, explaining away as he flips through the pages. First, let's assume that the Dayless Knight incident 13 years ago had an influence on the Quartering Duke's cases. It's like one of us is like, uh, Vidoc Q secretly and it's like rowdy. It's like, she's like, what is she, like 14 or 13 or something? She was like a, a baby. It's like, she was just boss baby, you know? That's how, no, like, okay, wait, I'm trying to explain this joke. Okay, but anyways, so I'm trying to explain this joke. So they're saying that like, um... No, it'll still be funny even if I, if I explain the joke. So, like, I'm saying that the Quartering Duke and, like, Vidoc Q, what if they're the same person? Then it's revealed that one of us is, like, both of them. You know what I mean? Like, what, uh, half of these people would be, like, a toddler when, like, the Dayless Night incident happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, especially if it was, like, techie or, like, rowdy. Like, literally just, like, an infant. Ah, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I'm evil. I was born evil. A whole lot of things, actually, but I'd say there are two points that are easy to grasp. First, a mysterious figure known as Lucifer claimed credit for the Dayless Night incident, after which he planned to incite mass murder nationwide. Yeah, that was that. That definitely seems connected somehow, too. If not for Vidoc Sr. and Co., the carnage would have surpassed the Duke's. Does that make it seem like the Duke is following Lucifer's lead? Another clue is that the neurotoxin made by those behind the... Dayless Knight incident was also used in the Quartering Duke's killings. It can't be manufactured at an individual scale. So it's safe to assume the remnants of that new religious movement are working with the Duke. Okay. Well, workaholic detective, any objections to my theory so far? No, your observations are astute. I too think there is a connection between the Quartering Duke and the Dayless Knight incident. I feel like I might need to re-look at the Dayless Night incident. Y'all remember this? I think some of y'all are new too, so it might be good to look this. Oh yeah, the lexicon is for like, wait, no, this is for the thingies. Wasn't there like another one? I thought there was like another section. Oh yeah, here we go, Dayless Night. I feel like the Dayless Night, was that the same thing as the thing that I got captured in? I think that was what I got confused on. Oh wow, Senior Detective was 27. <laughs> I was literally thinking that. I was thinking the same thing though. I was like, watch Senior Detective be like 30. <laughs> it's like, people in anime age really bad. <laughs> because like, I don't know if they, did they ever like specify if that was what we were captured for? 
Popular name for the series of incidents caused by the Morning Star Dawn Society, which at the time commanded public support and exercise influence the legal sphere. Sect founder Junichi Nanase, who went by the name Lucifer, targeted opponents by kidnapping, confining, torturing, and brainwashing them. It kind of seems like that, I think. He is also believed to have, yeah, yeah, so literally the brainwashing, experimenting thing. Kinjo. <laughs> We're just going to call that officer of the guard, Kenjo. He was complaining about, like, experimenting on kids, so we probably were. Oh, that's probably why we have, like, a special ability, too. That's how we got the That's a Raven thing, because we were, like, experimented on when we were a child. I think that makes the most sense, right? He is also believed to have carried out a number of cruel human experiments, though the building where it purported to have taken place has since collapsed in a disaster. It kind of seems like it was taken... taken here taken place here, but maybe it fell and they rebuilt it? I don't know. Lucifer utilized TV stations, internet broadcasts, steal the hearts of viewers with his witty comebacks and charismatic mannerisms. Steadily growing his hordes of believers. I kind of imagine Lucifer being a character like Rowdy. Not Rowdy, I mean, uh, Renegade. <laughs> oh, man. 30 years ago, thir oh, 13 years ago, Lucifer attempted to take advantage of the chaos after a major earthquake by plotting to release poison gas resulting in his capture by the world's premier detective Vidoc. Vidoc received global recognition for this accomplishment, eventually leading to the establishment of the DA. Although 13 years have passed since he was apprehended, Lucifer's followers have continued committing crimes in his name. Okay, he was captured though. The true irony is that by solving this case, Vidoc triggered an exponential increase in domestic crime, thereby fueling the ongoing detective praise. Sorry, I know that I read that before. I just kind of wanted to read it again because I feel like, I don't know, it might like, you know, reveal more later. <laughs> oh, man. No, your observations are astute. I too think there is a connection between the Quartering Duke and the Dayless Knight incident. Renegade detective smiles contentedly at workaholic's words before continuing with his explanation. <laughs> Fucking crazy ass sprite. That's what I realized. Every detective on this island just may be linked to either a quartering due case or the dayless night incident. Oh, that's some dang and rampa shit. I'm trying to like make it, make sure it's like connected or something to like previous cases. Why would they do that though? I don't know. Linked in what way exactly? As I said, Senior helped solve the dayless and night incident. Moreover, gourmet workaholic Dolph and Rowdy all lost family that day. Okay, Senior Help solved gourmet workaholic Dolph and Rowdy all lost family that day. Damn, interesting. How how do you know that? So they all lost family members then. Um. I'm trying to think of who else we've like. He likes so full of hope. He <laughs> really the fucking Kamida sprite. I can't. So gourmet, work all like doleful, rowdy. They all lost family, and then we also know that um downtown lost like a friend to the quartering duke. Why do you think I was holed up in the study for so long? Reading through pile after pile of precious detective alliance documents takes time. Obviously, there's no information that directly ties it to anyone, but for me, it was all too easy to piece together, like finding a Trevor Trump, because I'm just so fucking smart. So that's why you didn't help search the manor. You had your own investigation. Prying into private affairs is a sordid pastime, you know. Oh, you really do say the darndest things. Isn't conducting an earnest investigation the proper course for detective? What about everybody else? I don't know much about the Dayless Night incident, aside from what I've seen on TV. Bookworm is a victim of a case caused by a remnant of that religious movement. Mystic solved it and adopted her. Oh, so, okay, so we did adopt her. I was thinking, I was like, they don't look anything alike. Mystic solved it and adopted her after. Talk about going the extra mile. Ah, oh, Mystic, sweet. That's cute. And old Chipper downtown, her best friend was slain. Slay! I love that word. By the quartering duke. I'll bet she hates the guy more than anyone else. Okay. Downtown lost her best friend to him. It's like what Doleful said during dinner. Thinking back, I did feel a sense of rage from someone whenever the quartering duke came up. It was downtown, the girl who knows how to read a social situation. She must have been forcing a cheery smile to avoid spreading any negativity. I still haven't figured out the connections for you, Holmes, Posh, Tech, or Armor, but 
I'm sure there must be something. Okay, so Holmes, Posh, Tucker, Armor. We know Holmes with his, was with ice, and that definitely seems like the dayless night case. I don't think we really have anything for Posh, Tucker, Armor just yet. That horrible scene from 10 years ago resurfaces in my mind. If that confinement incident is connected to the Dayless Knight or the Quartering Duke, then both Holmes and I fit into Renegade's theory. I feel as if there's something I'm still struggling to remember, something I can't afford to forget. The Quartering Duck? What are y'all talking about? <laughs> Fucking- <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe the Quartering Duke is the Quartering Duck. Oh my god, it was Donald Duck the whole fucking time. <laughs> oh god, we're expanding the weeby Disney lore. Whatever the case, I have no doubts as to why we were all brought to this island. Donald Duck just got so pissed. He got so sick of already. He got so sick of all the Kingdom Hearts fans bitching about him. He decided to go on a murder rampage. Damn you, Donald. Now, fellow members of the Detective Alliance, let us work together to solve the Quartering Duke case. All for one and all, one for all. Oh, I feel so much fucking hope right now. So tingly. You have some nerve to say that after spewing enough nonsense to have incompetent jumping at every shadow now. You act as though life comes- Oh, you act as though life comes cheap. I will never approve of somebody like you, who treats murder cases like entertainment. Hold me more, why don't you? <laughs> it sounds like he's hitting on him. I value life more deeply than anyone else you know. I swear it by all that is holy. Oh. Renegade's glib words sound recited like lines from a play. It's a little it's a little wonder that a vein is pulsing on my mild, mild-mannered workaholic's temple. What Renegade said is true and confident. Many detectives here are tied to the Dayless Night incident, and its heir, the Quartering Duke. To put it plainly, it would be no surprise for one of us to be the Quartering Duke. We must determine who is friend and who is foe. That, of course, applies to me as well. <laughs> the Quartering Duck called it <laughs> the chat. Y'all going insane? Uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a Weeby News stream if the chat didn't go insane at least once. A Ducky Chan would be- Oh my god, the return of Ducky Chan! That's so true! Peanut! Oh my goodness! Ah. You're gonna make me fall over my chair, Peanut! Peanut! Come say hi! Come say hi, little guy! You had zoomies this morning, huh? You had zoomies, huh? Oh my goodness! Say hi, little guy! Everybody wants to see you! You're the star of the show! Oh my goodness! Oh, he's so cute! Oh my goodness! I don't know if y'all can hear his little meow, but he's such a little baby! You guys such a little baby meow, Peanut! Oh my goodness! What do you think about the quartering duck, Peanut? You have any thoughts? Ah, yes, very wise. Very wise. Oh, I always figured the two of us wouldn't see eye to eye. Renegade detective lets out a disinterested yawn and heads to the exit. Detectives are egotistical by nature, from Sherlock Holmes to a catchy. <laughs> my God. To my idol, a catchy. Oh God, he was so handsome. He also had the same voice as me, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's not actually Persona 5 Akechi. No, no, yeah, Goro Akechi. But the, what? Okay, no, that sounds way too fucking similar. They tried to reference him. Goro, I mean, Kagoro Akechi. Not to be confused with Goro Akechi. Okay, is there actually a Kagoro Akechi? Oh, wait, he's a private detective in... Huh. Oh, it's a fictional detective mystery. Okay, it's like an old school, I guess, Japanese detective thing. I guess maybe Akechi was actually uh, named after him. That makes more sense. <laughs> he does seem like a like an Akechi stand, though. From Sherlock Holmes to Goro Akechi, they're all more selfish than any criminal. <laughs> well, that's true. You're kind of spitting facts there. Any criminal could be, but also Akechi did nothing wrong. A detective doesn't care who's friend or foe. What matters is whether one finds fulfillment while being true to oneself. No. Of course, it's in our best interest to help one another, and we should do so much as we can. But living like one should die for others makes one unfit to be a detective. I'm talking about you, workaholic. You upright family man. And plus, you're like old. You're like, what, 27? Isn't it time to retire now? I don't need to take this from an outcast like you. Watch yourself, or you'll end up revealing your true colors. Renegade makes his way out of the living room, laughing uproariously all the while. Once it's just the two of us, workaholic lets loose with a deep sigh, sitting down right where he is. Oh god, I fucking hate that guy. 
<laughs> Ugh, why must everyone be so selfish? Why did the quartering duke have to lock him with us? I feel like as though my stomach is doing flips. Are you okay? I got medicine for that, if you need it. Um, excuse you, no a catchy slander in chat. That's a perma ban. <laughs> That's an instant ban on the Weeby News channel. Um, excuse you. I see some a catchy slander. He did nothing wrong. He's my baby boy. <laughs> I mean, my baby girl, actually. Thanks, incompetent, but it's quite all right. Adults always have such things on hand. Sorry I had to see Renegade and me lock horns like... Sorry I had to see me and Renegade lock horns like that. We have a disagree... We had a dis disagreement earlier today. And we've been at it ever since. Fucking Renegade's probably like, Let's sacrifice somebody! It'll be fun! <laughs> Come on, guys! So, that's what happened. I was just... I was just kidding, Axel. But, <laughs> you know. I was just... I was just memeing. We, we kind of joke about memeing. Or joke about, like, a catchy slander not being allowed in, like, the Discord. Whenever he gets brought up it figures renegade detective seems to be the obstinate type and yet is that all there really is to it it's hard to believe that their bad blood is only due to conflict of opinion of course now probably isn't the time to pry into it yeah it's either like a really big disagreement or there's some history there you know what i mean well, I think I'm going to clock out for the day. Regardless of how many cameras we've installed, it's dangerous to be on your own. Please be careful. Oh, wow. Is it already the end of the day? God, the first day was like, what? Like, how many hours long? Like, eight hours long? <laughs> I will. Thanks. I will. Thanks, workaholic. Now alone in the room, I lean back into my chair, letting my mind linger on the things workaholic had said. Determine who is friend and who is foe, huh? I look at the security feeds on the tablet and see the detectives in their rooms, each of them passing the time in their preferred way. Downtown does her nails, whereas Rowdy is training vigorously. Armor sits cross-legged in meditation. Doleful is dozing, off, dozing in bed while Posh pins a letter. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Armor's meditating? He didn't really seem like the type. Everyone has their own circumstances, each is living according to their own ideals. I refuse to even entertain the idea of one of them being the quartering duke. Never! We're all best friends! I hope we all make it back alive. <laughs> I doubt that. I wonder how many of these characters are gonna die. Cause I mean, uh, you know, I like in Dong and Rampa, like a lot of, like a shit ton of characters die, but it might be more like, well, no, I guess it can't be like, well, I guess it's kind of a spoiler for that game. I don't know, I was like, I don't know if really, all of us will die. Maybe like half of us or something. My honest feelings slip out of my mouth. I'm startled when they receive a reply. Such splendid aspirations. Perhaps the title of ideal detective suits you better than it does me. Holmes. She floats over to my side, pressing close to me. It's not as though I can feel the weight of her body, but strangely enough, it still makes me feel warm and relaxed. You've been gone for a while now. Where were you hiding? Despite only existing in the realm of thought, it seems I too experience fatigue. My mind dozed off for a while. Not dissimilar to taking a nap. Oh, <laughs> little ghost nap. So basically, you still need to get some rest once in a while. There's still much to unpack, but it would appear so, yes. Much like a human body. My consciousness shuts down for six to eight hours a day. Okay, so she won't be able to see. Because I was like, another thing, if we just have like a ghost buddy, couldn't she see like, and if she was awake all the time, she could like, um, you know, whatchamacallit, um, just see like when the murders happen and stuff, or at least kind of get a good idea of like, you know, how the murder happened. I feel like it just seems too OP. Since you mentioned not seeing me, I must assume that I'm not visible to you during this period. Quite an odd arrangement, I must say. That makes three rules we know how, about how Holmes functions. She can't be more than three meters away from me. Our minds are linked so she can so she can read my minds and share my dreams when I'm asleep. And finally, her mind shuts down once a day for six to eight hours, during which I can't see her. She's probably connected to me too because of the dayless night incident. Because yeah, we were both experimented on, allegedly. Um, I don't really know how that would affect her ghost. I guess maybe the experiments had... I guess it was like a cult, so... I guess that makes sense. The experiments would have to do with, like, the afterlife. So maybe, like, they were experimenting as well for seeing the future. And also for, like, um, whatchamacallit. Um, trying to, like, you know, see the afterlife or whatever. So even after... So even as a living... 
thought. She doesn't have free reign. Talk about inconvenient. Oh, yeah, she is bound to Watto, I guess. By the way, you said the culprit is still in the manor, right? That I did? What about it? Yeah. Well, that would mean that it has to be someone in the Detective Alliance, right? Uh, um. Oh, damn it. That was a spoiler. Holmes' eyes go wide, and she tilts her head in apprehension. Why well, ask now, after all this time, is someone acting particularly suspicious? Well, renegade, but, you know, he's always kind of like that. Just the opposite. When I'm with everyone, all I see is a group of individuals who are passionate about their convictions. I can't wrap my mind around the idea that one of them could be a serial killer like the Quartering Duke. Workaholic said I need to figure out who my enemies and allies are, but I have no clue. Am I just not cut out to be a detective? Hehe, <laughs> is that what's troubling you? You are truly adorable. Holmes motions as if she were patting me on the head, smiling as she continues to speak. Consider this, Watto. Human beings cannot simply be divided into friends or foes. Let's say, for example, the mystic is the killer. Would you then call the way he saved you today an act of evil? No, that isn't. Huh. Why are you hesitating? If he's the culprit, that makes him your sworn foe, doesn't it? I can't condone murder, but I can't see him as an enemy either. I won't judge him without knowing the relevant context first. Well said. Good or evil, friend or foe. These denominations can always shift according to the situation and point of view. I see why workaholic suspects Renegade, but you needn't do the same with your fellow detectives, Watto. If you think you should trust them, do so. Maybe workaholic just does better with having like a uh, primary suspect, you know what I mean? Like a goal? Because yeah, he's kind of like moved on from me to Renegade. I mean, Renegade's more understandable though. <laughs> the situation and point of view, huh? She's right. I don't know what happened between Workaholic and Renegade, so I can't make any judgments. And that's to say nothing of how I, how much I still don't know about the other detectives. I should start talking to each one of them so I can get to know their lives and personalities better. Free time? Looking to get to know the others better, huh? A good call and very much a you thing to do. I'm rooting for you, Watto. Would you please stop reading my mind? It feels dehumanizing. It's invasive. There's no help helping it. I hear you even when I don't want to. We're halves of a whole. You and I. Two minds and one body. I'm in your walls and in your brain. And in your shower. If nothing else, I will always be at your side. Come what may, I would appreciate a little more trust on your part. Well, of course I trust you, Holmes. Holmes, you say. Oh, uh-oh. I hear a voice behind me and swivel around. Oh, Mystic. Oh, yeah, aren't you like, you know... You have to do, like, the afterlife or, like, you know, rituals and shit. You'd think that you would have... I guess you would be more, I don't know, inclined to believe us. You know what I mean? Standing there is Mystic, a grim look upon his face. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Shoot, I completely dropped my guard! The sudden interruption sends my heart racing. I shoot Holmes a glance for guidance, but... <laughs> Later! And uh, deuces! Opportunity knocks. Why don't you go ahead and tell them about me? <laughs> you said not to though. I thought that was like a rule or something. A rule of like ghost dumb. How many save files are there? Kind of curious. It's like your turn to die all over again. It's like I haven't been saving enough though. Oh my Jesus. Okay, 48. Really? It's kind of a random number. Opportunity knocks. Why don't you go ahead and tell them about me? Holmes giggles next to Mystic, as if this whole situation doesn't concern her in the least. What did I got myself into? Bookie is asleep, so I decide to check on you all, only to stumble on a chance finding. It is time you told me the full truth. Gulp. Mystic Detective begins to, to approach me. I wonder if he'll believe me if I say I was just hallucinating like last night. I'm just fucking crazy, man. It's just Bro, I found some weed in the storage of the quartering duke. He knows it's like around 420. So he left us some, bruh. He's kind of chill. It's kind of a chill dude. So, you know, I just, you know, I took some, took a little too much. Now I'm seeing Holmes. Or maybe that I was thinking out loud. I don't know how to spin this. Indifferent to my panicking, Mr. Detective steps up and poses one simple question to me. Oh, hey, he's onto it. Are you able to perceive Holmes' spirit? Uh, wh what? My voice cracks at the unexpected accusation. Allow me to make some tea before we before we spill the tea. How many sugars do you take? The uh, one. 
No, I'm a big boy. I don't take three sugars. Missing detective prepares tea for two, then seats himself on the sofa across from me. I might take a quick bathroom break really quickly, just because uh, I think this might be a good point to stop, since it's kind of like a new scene. I will um, set up a flush or something for you guys and mute the audio. One second. I can give you guys some time to, uh, whatchamacallit, take a little break too, but I kind of want to get some more water as well. Um, do do do. We'll do the Midori this time. Everybody's favorite. And he has the same voice as Renegade, so it's another reason <laughs> to love him. Man, YouTube's sending out a bunch of ads. I keep seeing uh, keep seeing people talk about that. That's so uh, interesting. Okay, well, I'll be right back. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm back. Oh, Peanut's still here too. What's up, buddy? I wish you guys could see him. To do. I hope my hair looks okay too. I feel like I'm having a really bad hair day. <laughs> oh, bad. Okay, well I'm back, so we can uh, continue the tea spilling with the tea. Now I kind of want some tea. <laughs> <clears throat> mm. 
Okay, there we go. Miss Detective, prepare us. Oh, wait. <laughs> Let me get the music back on. There we go. Just in case. Mr. Detective prepares tea for two, then seats himself on the sofa across from me. I initially thought of him as a ga as gaudy, but look at him now. He appears almost dignified. His actions in the trap room must have swayed me. Do not be troubled. I am not here to rebuke you in any way. Yes, you really should relax. Tensing up all the time is, bad to is a bad habit of yours, you know. I want to blurt out that she's the reason I'm so tense, but I tamp it down before it leaves my throat. Holmes floats cheerfully about next to Mystic, relishing in the fact that only I can see her. I finally start to realize how much more childish she is than my first impression of her. She is still a child. <laughs> is Holmes beside me right now at this moment? How did you know? Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, shit. I was not supposed to say that. She did say something about, like, you're not supposed to tell them. But I don't know if they really said anything about, like, what happens if we do tell them or if there's any, like, issue with telling them, really. Stupid me, I stepped right into that one. There's no explaining my way out of this anymore. Mystic studies me, cackling wryly at what I assume is whatever stupid expression I'm wearing right now. Your face is far too telling for a detective. Then again, perhaps, that's a good thing. How'd you know I was able to see Holmes? Don't tell me. Can you see ghosts too? I cannot. Much as I sought to master the gift, it is not simple. It's not a simple one to acquire. I simply followed the movement of your line of sight. You were gazing at someone other than me, just as you had when you screamed last night. While hallucinating, one's vision turns warped and unfocused. I've done a lot of drugs, let me tell you what. <laughs> Therefore, I surmise that you were not delirious, but instead, seeing clearly. Huh, does that mean the others figured out I was lying too? If they realize I can see Holmes, they might even catch on to my de denoint. <laughs> I don't like it. I see the word denoyment ability. If anyone finds out, you're certain to be eliminated, Watto. A chill runs through me as I recall Holmes' warning. That's what it was. Like by the quartering duke or whatever? I guess I guess so. Way to be vague. Fear not. The shifts were too subtle for them to catch. Regardless, their disbelief in ghosts makes it unlikely they would have touched upon the truth. That effectively, that effectively makes me the only person who could deduce that you are able to see the spirits of Holmes. So be at ease. Mystic laughs as if this is all no big deal. He's so quick to catch on that it's actually frightening. Denoise. Denoise? <laughs> it's like, is that how you say it? I can't remember. Um, this may be a weird time to ask, but do ghosts actually exist? What an odd question. You are able to see Holmes right next to me, are you not? Precisely, Watto. It's about time you accepted the fact that I'm real instead of protesting. Holmes sides with Mystic to pressure me. He can't even see her, yet in a weird way they're still ganging up on me. Like, <laughs> this just isn't fair! <laughs> well, yeah, I can see her and hear her voice, but in the end it really isn't much comfort. Holmes died right in front of my eyes, so being reunited is hard to believe. I keep worrying it's all some convenient delusion. Some, con some convenient plot twist. Watto. I understand. You fear that you are fa falling prey to your own cognitive bias. You did simp for her pretty hard. Cognitive bias? It's not a difficult notion in this case. It would apply in order to reach your favorite conclusion. You only sought out the facts and confirmed it. You desire to be reunited with Holmes. You want to believe the Holmes you see now is truly her. And so you seek affirmation, correct? Correct. Denouement, 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 denouement. That's how you say it. I was like, I knew it wasn't denoise. <laughs> I was like, I don't know why they were typing that in chat. It's just as Mystic says, I truly do hope that the Holmes, the Holmes that I see now is actually her. Every piece of evidence she provides makes me believe she's the real Holmes. And that just fills me with joy. I believe that the Holmes I see now really is her and I have the proof to support my thinking. But then I think that maybe all that proof is no more than my generous interpretation of things, meaning I can't trust myself. I'm kind of worried now that Mystic's gonna die. Maybe he'll be the next victim and not um, downtown. Because I feel like him learning about this, I don't know, is kind of a death flag. Especially since, you know, what's her face? 
ideal is like, oh, you know, they're gonna get you if you tell somebody about it. It's like, we're the main character, so I assume we have plot armor. So what would be like the next choice? It would be Mystic, so. I don't know, man, got a bad feeling about that. Most are unaware of their own biases. Biases. But you are willing to objectively assess yourself. I would say you have very little to worry about. It's gonna be really hard on Bookworm if he does die, because she already lost, like, her, you know, biological family. It's like, I mean, that sucked to lose, like, the person that adopted you too. Mr. Detective sighs in mild exasperation before patting me on the head. And the fact that she calls him father too must, like, really imply that their relationship is super close. He's been, like, a really good father figure to her. There's nothing else for it. I, Mystic Detective, shall personally instruct you on in how to engage with the occult. Engage with the occult. Incompetent detective, would you believe me if I said that vampires and werewolves do in fact ex- Well, I'm talking to a ghost at night, so sure, why the fuck not? Do vampires sparkle at least in this universe? What do you mean, the mythical monsters? Come on, there's no way they're real! Indeed, and yet, both vampires and werewolves have not only appeared in our world, but also been guilty of homicide. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, not Jacob or Edward! What? It's like, oh my god, does that mean I can find- I can find my Edward? Mr. Detective operates his D-pad, calling up a collection of files. Twilight was based off a true story. I fucking knew it! The case of the vampire, in which the bodies of young girls were found with their blood drained, or rather, consumed. And the case of the lycanthrop, in which a renowned literary scholar's body was found clawed to shreds in a quiet residential area. Well, anybody could have done that. <laughs> I know the name of both of these famous cases, and now I see a commonality between the two. Yeah, interesting. Come on, humans could drink blood too. Or put on some fake claws. No, I'm just kidding. Incompetent detective. Incompetent detective, do you know what these incidents have in common? Both are inexplicable, inexplicable unsolved cases. I remember them trending online, but like, I can fix them. Come on, I want my little fantasy. The crimes seem to be so inhuman in nature that their investigation went cold. Yes, but in reality, the culprits have been identified in both cases. The police simply avoided making it public. What, why would the police want to keep that under wraps? Because the perpetrators were far too anomalous. Anomalous? Legosi. <laughs> okay, can you, Siri, can you stop? Can you stop, girl? Can you please? Let's be quiet. Let's, quiet time, Siri. I'm gonna put you down. I'm gonna put you down. <laughs> Legosi. Oh, Y'all can't see. Okay, I just like put my watch on the desk. It looks kind of funky. Legosi Camaris, the culprit in the unsolved case of the vampire, suffers from allotriopog... Allo... <laughs> Ah, it gets me! <laughs> this game is really challenging me. I can't even say killing game. Like, why are they giving me these words? Allotria fa Faji, with an appetite for feasting on the blood of women. The Hungarian police struggle, of course it was like Hungary or something, struggle to uncover the reason for the crime. That just seems like a place that vampires would live at. They also have yet to arrest Kamaras, which shames them to this day. Oh my god, can one of us be a vampire? I didn't realize a disease like that actually existed. Um, exceedingly rare, but yes. Accessible examples can occasionally be found in shocking television features on people who eat dirt or iron. Ew. Theories abound as to why, but Kamaras has a high red blood cell count, causing constant dehydration, his thirst for water, and iron drove him to murder. Okay, so it's like a disease that kind of makes him like a vampire, it seems like at least... What about the werewolves? It also gives him exceptional muscular endurance and regeneration. Oh, just kidding. He does have superpowers. <laughs> he is thus gifted with superhuman movement, which with which he evades the police. This sounds like something straight out of a comic book or movie. Indeed, but this is reality. The crime took place over a decade ago, and Kamaras has been on the run ever since. A truly terrifying man. And yet, Miku. Oh my god, Miku's a vampire? Oh no, she's a werewolf. Shizaki, the culprit behind the case of the Lycanthropy, resulted, resolved by myself, is even more bizarre than the Kamaras. Not Hatsune Miku. Huh, even more than a vampire? What'd they do? Mystic clenches his fist, veins pulsing as he speaks. 
she raised her own daughter as a mere tool for revenge. Huh. Her daughter a tool for revenge. What does that even mean? Do you know of foot binding? In one foreign land, small feet were once so prized. Oh yeah, I have heard of that. That is freaky. Once so prized that youths were made to shape them by wearing specialized shoes. Those are really freaky. I don't know if y'all have seen pictures of that, but like... It's like literally they'll like bind people's feet to keep them, um, you know, tight and like small, like, you know, keep their feet really small. And like they'll literally like break their feet because like they wear it so it won't grow. So it's like growing, but then it like breaks and like the toes get on top of each other. It looks so fucked up. And I've heard about that. The shoes, stunted bone growth, making the feet naturally tiny, right? It's like really hard to walk on those kinds of feet. I could, you know, I can imagine. It's difficult to imagine now, but apparently the custom was seen as quite ordinary in this country where small feet were so idealized. In the same vein, many women suffer similarly torturous processes today, such as extreme dieting and the pursuit of unrealistic beauty. I feel that Shizaki followed the principles of foot binding by cramming her own do- Ah! Oh, Jesus! Cramming- No wonder he was so pissed talking about this story. Cramming her own daughter into a box. Instead of schooling, the girl was instructed in how to kill. In doing so, she created the world's smallest- What the fuck? Trying to keep her in a box so she won't grow and capable of slipping into dwellings. Capable of slipping into dwellings through unbelievably tight- What the fuck is wrong with this chick? Man, I want to reference something so bad too. But it's a spoiler. I feel like y'all probably know though. Why- why would she do something so terrible? How could any human be that inhumane? Not a fucking human, a monster. I'll spare you the details, but it was all due to mere envy. There are those who despise the success of others to the point of self-annihilation. The girl found in Shizaki's house had never had never had her hair or nails cut. Oh man, it was incapable of speech. Damn it, you didn't even teach her how to freaking, freaking speak. No more than a beast in human form. The police couldn't even couldn't even envision the outlandish truth. As such, no one listened to the victim's daughter, who claimed the culprit was a werewolf. But when the DA sent me in, I believed the child solving the case had had I not considered the possible existence of werewolves, it would have remained cold. It's like, God, oh man, not so fucked up. Man, that is so messed up. So sad. I hope that girl was able to get some help, but man, that's gonna be really hard to like undo that amount of trauma. That must have been tough for the victim's daughter. No one believed her eyewitnesses account for her father's killer. Quite so, but if you were in the police's position, would you have humored the girl? If you were told that a crime was committed by a vampire or a werewolf, would you be ready to believe it? Well, um, uh... Well, there are obviously horrible situations. When I think back on my past experiences, I honestly can't criticize the police for their actions. If I had known nothing about the occult and only read about these cases, I likely would have brushed them off without ever knowing the insane reality. It seems your way of thinking would have hardly differed from theirs. Mystic gives a pained smile as though he is peering right into my very soul. You needn't be so hard on yourself about it. Most people scoff at the mere mention of the occult, which I think is quite natural. Just now, when I inquired about vampires and werewolves, you denied their existence. I can't object at all. I'm no different from anyone else who immediately dismisses the occult. That's exactly how I'm treating the phenomenon happening to me right now, too. I probably thought my current situation was also an impossible supernatural occurrence and laughed it off. It is only natural to feel that way. If you have not even a single person who believes you. If you will permit me, incompetent detective, I believe you can see the deceased Holmes. She has a liking for honest men like yourself, after all. You are just her type. Thank you, that's reassurance to hear. So I still got a chance, right? <laughs> she might be dead and a ghost, but come on, I still got a chance, be honest, be honest. I take Mystic's outstretched palm and exchange a firm handshake with him. I've always been super interested in, like, the occult and stuff. That's something I've always wanted to do videos on. I'll probably be, like, a second channel, though, since uh, this one's 
I feel like solely for like gaming and anime, but that's kind of something I thought about doing on like a second channel. Like, yeah, just kind of occult stuff or like different, um, cons not like, I don't know about conspiracy theories, but I don't know, just stuff like that. I find it fun. And I usually am kind of skeptic and don't believe it, but I just like find it fun to hear about. I take Mystic's outstretched palm and exchange a firm hands Jake with him. It feels as if a burden I've been shouldering all by myself has finally been removed. As I have shown, the world is rife with that witch. With that which cannot, can only be defined as supernatural. One can never see the truth if they are fettered by common sense. Thus, despite that mockery, I'm Ankur. I believe in the occult, never discounting any possibility. Only I, mystic detective, can fulfill this role. I see no traces of gloom and mystic smile. The man before me, like Holmes, is another top-notch detective, willing to become a martyr for what he believes in. Holmes said the same thing. Once the facts have disproven all the other options, that which remains must also be fact. That's spoopy news. <laughs> that'd be cute. Oh, that's cute if, uh, <laughs> that you guys are saying you'd watch that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've been kind of thinking about starting, like, a second channel or something along those lines. Maybe someday. I should, for sure. Ha, oh, those are the very, very, very words I passed on to her. I think that little contrarian would grow into, to think that little contrarian would gr grow into such a splendid individual. <laughs> Watch what you say, mystic detective. <laughs> I can enter your brain, too. Holmes, who had been floating lazily in the air, shoots down towards Mystic. Of course, Mystic is entirely unperturbed, since he can't actually hear her. Were you close to Holmes, Mystic? When the Detective Alliance was established, with her at its core, an associate of mine invited me to join. You could consider me a founding member. Mem member. <laughs> Your founding member, Mystic, and the organization was established around Holmes. I feel like this guy is so fucking dead. I like him, and like, I feel like this conversation just keeps making me like him more and more, but I'm like, don't get attached. Don't get attached, Weeby. Don't do it. Uh, uh, did she not tell you? I warned her time and time again that being overly secretive would be her undoing. So far, it has been like a lot of the core members of the Detective Alliance dying first, you know? With her and Senior. I guess Senior was, like, retired, but he was still pretty important beforehand. Now Mystic. Well, he hasn't died yet, but, you know. Forgive me, she means no harm, but she tends to take on far too much of her own. Her body was often unable to handle the strain. Her efforts eventually bore fruit, and she became chief to the Alliance, in both name and deed. But to me, she'll always be <laughs> a little crybaby. <laughs> Hey now, even with this ancient history, are you trying to make Wato disappointed in me? <laughs> oh, so when she was 12 and she started the Alliance, she was just a little girl. Holmes swings her fist in quick succession, feeling to strike Mr. Kitchen every time. <laughs> it's cute to see her react in a way that matches her age in lieu of her usual cool self. Though I can't really picture Holmes as being a crybaby. <laughs> this is funny. I take it she's swinging her fist at me. <laughs> he knows her too well. <laughs> Yeah, you're spot on. <laughs> oh, ever so quick to get physical. She never changes. How dearly I wish to see her once more. Aw, that's sad. He's such a dad. I love him. Oh, man, damn it. I can't help it. I love him. Uh, I just feel like he's gonna... I feel like he's gonna die. Holmes drops her fist, turning to face me. A hint of tear glints in her eyes. Watto, would you mind telling Mystic Detective something for me? Huh? Even though I'm the one who can hear her, Holmes drifts closer to me and whispers gently in my ear. Um, Holmes wants to tell you something, Mystic. Aw. A message for my ideal detective. What does she say? Aw, that's so sad. She says, I'm sorry that we weren't able to solve the case of the vampire. All my resolve and determination is passed on to incompetent now. Okay. Foolish girl. Even after her own demise, she still only thinks of others. Aw. Listen to me, Holmes. Don't go resting in peace just yet. I swear that a competent detective and I will catch whoever killed you. When that moment comes, I would like for you to be there. I'll be watching. You had better make sure to live a good long life, Mystic. Aw, oh, that's so cute. Aw, I love seeing them having their little parting words. Don't worry, Mystic. You're probably going to die soon, too. <laughs> You'll be reunited with her. Don't worry, buddy. I sense that in your future. Mystic can't see Holmes, and yet they seem to look right into each other's eyes as they, as they exchange words. I notice my drink is nearly empty. The hour is growing late. I really should finish my tea and rest up for tomorrow. When I raise the cup to my lips, 
Oh, that reminds me. Incompetent detective, tell me, can you also predict the future? Oh, hey, how'd you know that? <laughs> I guess Molly didn't see me, save Doleful. I spent my tea out at the unexpected answer. Your reaction says it all. So it is indeed as I surmised. Uh, how did you know? What, what, was it my line of sight again? No, remember how you saved Doleful in that trapped room today. Your actions then tipped me off. Holmes was quite adept with her predict- Holmes is quite, quite adept with her predictions. So I had an inkling. I can tell by your visage that you've yet to master the skill, however. Well, you'd be right about that. He saw right through me. Holmes said I can't let my enemies learn about this power. Thankfully, it's only a mystic, but I need to be more careful. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, maybe he won't die. I should stop jinxing him, too. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, I got bad. I got a bad feeling. I feel like if he died, too, that would give, like, Bookworm, like, um, I don't know, like, a chance to grow, too, as a character and kind of, like, you know, become her own person or maybe we could get closer with her or something along those lines. Because I feel like right now she's kind of, like, cute off to herself with, like, Mystic. So I could see him dying for, like, her character development as well. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. What did Holmes say? That she had no interest in how it works. <laughs> As expected. And yet, if you do not grasp the principles behind it, you cannot wield it to its full extent. Such a troublesome child. Rude! I mastered it perfectly well without understanding the mechanics. You should be more than a capable of doing the same, Watto. Holmes pursues her lips. Purses her lips in protest, while Mystic lets out a laborious sigh. Needless to say, her words don't reach him. This is why geniuses who do everything extempore are so difficult for the sake of our futures. I shall contemplate your abilities workings. If you don't mind, would you share all you have experienced up to the present? It's not getting too late for you? Fret not, for I am a night owl. I am a detective of all that is mystical after all. What's that supposed to mean? Mystic brews us another pot of tea. We discussed it in... <laughs> we discussed the thing ability I inherited from Holmes and my newfound powers of precognition. <laughs> Forgot. Denouement. That's what it was. Denouement. Or denouement. Denouement. Make it French. Let us accept her reason out to why it is that you were able to predict the future. Does logic really apply here? I mean, it's basically a superpower. That is where you are wrong. Even magic and superpowers have a logic to them. In video games, magic requires points derived from your abilities and skills. So too do all things, the occult included. Follow a set of rules. Why do you look so perplexed? I just, it didn't take you for much of a, for, for much of a gamer. Uh, what are you, gamer detective? Got him. Do not underestimate me. I, I'm not a loser, okay? I'm not some kind of neckbeard who plays games all day. Plays Danganronpa alone in his basement. You stand before the man who bought, bought the very first copy of Ryuki, Ryuke the day it went on sale. Oh, you are a gamer. But never mind that. Regardless of your persistent abilities, you cannot predict a single thing without a basis in facts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did anything noteworthy occur when you made your prediction today? The brain blast. Now that you mention it, when I saw a doleful in my vision, I heard something snap in my head. <laughs> my field of vision flickered, too. Eureka, this suggests your ability is linked to visual cues, to which your brain responds in some manner. Let us continue pursuing this train of thought. Mystic is willing to believe me, no matter what I say. He's so nice. He's such a dad. I love him. I want to discuss my precognitive abilities with someone, anyone, but I didn't expect to find such a supportive ally. I have a dad. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's reassuring. Can I call you dad? <laughs> no. It's reassuring to say the least. I'm grateful from the bottom of my heart that I'm able to speak to Mystic about this. I can tell you're enjoying yourself, Watu. It's almost enough to make me envious. Yeah, I'm having fun. It's exciting to see the mysteries and obscure start to take shape. That's the spirit. No doubt about it. You're gradually approaching the truth. 
And once you understand it all, I'll... Oh. Eh. Disappear. Disappear. <laughs> Fade away. Way, way. Pay me no mind. Ah, uh, yeah, totally. I was merely thinking aloud. From there, my conversation with the mystic continues all the way until dawn. That's cute. Oh, I love Mystic. He's so sweet. How where is this? Oh, another dream. I realize I'm in a world of pure white. God, it's so fucking bright. Use me in a daze for a moment, but the bizarreness of it all gradually keys me in. I'm in a dream. Well, well, Walter. This time you figured out that you're dreaming from the outset. Can we switch to dark mode, ideal? <laughs> I don't like this, man. It's too fucking bright. Oh, thank God. Holmes is suddenly right behind me. The abruptness strikes me as fitting for a dream. Oh, uh, thank you. Big chunk of Nico Burger King. Oh, my God. I love it. The profile. Yes, Stan Nico. <laughs> I'm late. Hello. I have a new advertisement. Oh, that's so funny. Is that like a meme for... Is that a meme for his streams? I gotta check on, I gotta check on Nico's playthroughs. He's playing one game right now that looks really interesting. What was it called? It's not Phasmophobia, but it's like, I feel like the name kind of reminds me of that. But it looks really interesting. Sensing I've accepted the situation, Holmes keeps talking as she walks around the area. The question is, has your discussion with Mystic led you to ascertain the nature of your newly awakened, awaked, Awaken day new mon. I'm gonna at least get rid of the preview so I'm not blinded on both sides. I don't do bright, <laughs> bright color as well. Or like just bright lights in general well. Oh, Paranorma site. Yeah, it looked pretty interesting. It's like, I think it kind of like, I don't know, something like the way you look around seemed to have to do with the gameplay. It looks pretty cool. She's refer referring to what happened before I fell asleep. Looked kind of scary. I rack my brain, trying to re re recollect my conversation with Mystic. It starts coming back to me in bits and pieces. Well, strictly speaking, the denouement isn't a power that predicts the future, but one that allows you to see through everything. Mystic believes it stems from visual feedback. Right, on the mark. They say the human brain records everything that it sees, but simply isn't able to recall it all to mind. Even with our group, we have Bookworm. With the incredible ability to remember all she's seen, our visual recollection is far greater than we realize. That flawless recollection of everything she's ever seen is the cause of Bookworm's suffering. Now I realize why she was so glum about using her ability while we set up the cameras. It hurt to think back on how high my spirits were then. Being unable to forget a single thing must be far more taxing than I can imagine. Yeah, for real. Oh yeah, this reminds me. We should totally play Phasmophobia. I know! I want to play Phasmophobia on the server so bad. I feel like I've tried to... I feel like it was a while ago I asked before. I don't think anybody had it at the time. But maybe now we can do it. The only bad thing is I think it's only like four people at a time. But it's so fun. It's also like so meme too. The characters just like look so awkward in the game. It's really good though. I like, I like that game a lot. I like scary games. Now for the real question. If you could recall all you see, honing your eye to perfection, would allow you to record information in greater detail, no? Not only images, but movements. Subtle minute. <laughs> this is like, oh my god, this game is like my final boss with these words. Subtle minuta minut <laughs> minotaurs, or a residual thought like me. <laughs> what would happen if you could perceive all the world has to show? Huh, what would happen? As you have already experienced, you you would see the future. That is the real nature behind the foresight denouement has bestowed upon you. Oh, minutia? I've heard people say that. Or minutiae. Minutia. Minutia. I feel like I've heard people say that. I've never seen it spelled out before. By knowing everything, you can predict the future. I think I've heard something like that before. Isn't that called uh, Laplace's Demon? Well done. Yes, this is the same principle. Every outcome has a cause. Therefore, you can grasp all causes. You can derive all outcomes. Paradoxical, paradoxical as it may sound. So if I can pay close attention, close enough attention to everything that passes my field of vision. Yes, it stands to follow that you will become able to envision the future. I surmise this as you and Mystic spoke. Discerning causality via sharpened vision is the crux of denouement, as well as how you can perceive me. Especially you... 
have been dis bestowed with all seeing eyes. All seeing eyes. Oh my god, I do have the Sharon gun. No way, I fucking knew it. My daughter shivers at her words. Her explanation drives home how amazing this power really is. Oh my god, am I Sasuke? <laughs> However, it also raises the question. You keep telling me the principles behind the denouement didn't matter. Why suddenly explain it to me now? Uh, I couldn't take it. Huh? You are just so stupid. I just I realized I had to spell it out for you. Holmes' cheeks flush, a tinge of embarrassment in her voice. I didn't want you to think I was unreliable. So from now on, trust me, not mystic. After all, I'm an ideal detective, rank number two on the Detective Alliance. There's nothing I don't know. Must be dreaming well. I mean, I am dreaming, but it's all just a bit too convenient. Would the real Holmes actually speak this brashly? I'm taken aback by her out of the blue response, unable to formulate a reply. My face feels hot, like burning lava. I must be as red or even worse than Holmes right now. Just thinking about it is so mortifying that my skin is about to erupt. We stare at each other in total silence. Her face is glowing rosily. Oh, um, um, Holmes, I <clears throat> have a question. I speak out, unable to handle any more of this. That's right, I still haven't confirmed whether she's really, she really is Psyka or not. If I don't ask now, I may never have another chance. I don't want to lose contact without ever bringing it up. This is a dream, so my trust, so I trust my chances. Find my courage and voice my thoughts. Holmes, 10 years ago, were you really? Oh, I gotta leave, oh, ghost things to do. God damn it. I fucking do it. Every time, every freaking time. Don't try and stop me, you slack jaw palooka. Hell's a palooka. Huh? It's morning. I leap upright, awakened by a sudden angry voice. I was wondering if he just fell asleep here. Apparently, I fell asleep on the sofa. I must have passed out while conversing with Mystic, upon which he covered me with a blanket. It's fucking dead. I love him. I love him so much. Oh my god. Father. So like, you know, like pop stands say like mother and like mothering. He's fathering. I fucking love him, dude. He's the best. Sorry, Mystic. Ugh, I'm gonna be a Mystic stan, a Mystic simp. It pains me the way I was nothing but a burden yesterday. I don't want people babysitting me. I need to shape up and be a real detective. And then there's that dream I just had. I didn't get to ask her after all. I thumb my chest lightly, determined to work up enough courage to ask next time. Enough about my de denouement and visual feedback or whatever. I need to stop acting like such a coward and be brave when it matters most. <laughs> Bree, I don't want to learn about athletic greens. But Bree, don't forget to eat your greens. Quick question. Will you do all the free time events when it's introduced? Even the new game ones? Probably. Kind of depends on how much time I guess it takes to. I feel like at the very least I'll probably watch like videos of it. Kind of like what I did for like SDRA 2 after the video, you know, finished. This is no time to be down on myself. Angry voices clamor in my periphery. As I space out, it sounds like things are getting heated. I need to see what's going on. Fast. There you are, incompetent. You gotta get over here. Oh god. Over your stat, Rowdy and Armor are going, like, totally buck wild. Okay, good. They're just fighting. I was like, oh, God. Okay, I'm right behind you. Downtown dashes to the entrance hall, pulling me along by the hand. How many times do I got to say it? We can take that black whatever it is, capiche? Time is of the efforts. F efforts. Essence. Pray after in us, and we shall sally forth. The fuck y'all talking about? Calm down, you two. Let's try to keep our heads on, shall we? Our whole crew can get wasted here, and you want me to stay calm? Armor and Rowdy crowd around workaholic in front of the door. Their menacing posture makes them look ready to pounce. The, the target dog leave, leave or something? What's all the commotion about? The words Rowdy blurted stick out to me in particular. It's not a reason I could see them wanting to, like, you know, leave. What's all this about us getting wasted? So incompetent. Hey, perfect time and help me talk some sense into these eggheads, will ya? Randy approaches me while holding one of the flower vases on display all over the manor. You recognize this vase, yeah? Nothing. Notice anything fishy? Hmm. Smell something out again? There's one in every room, right? Doesn't seem all that strange. What's up? You're way beyond what's up, bud. <laughs> 
These vases, they house the toxin most foul. One, oh. One that turns into vapor at room temperature, pervading its environs. Environs. Huh, so you mean if we stayed here? Okay, so we eventually die from poison. Yeah, but every one of us nearly died. If I hadn't been investigating with my friend, Sniffy, w oh yeah, Sniffy Whiffy saved us. We wouldn't have been in dire peril. Ah, uh, thank you, Sniffy Whiffy. You were the one who discovered it, Techie. Sniffy Whippy, happened to react to it this morning. My analysis confirms the same substance that was used to kill the staff at Snarks. Oh, interesting. So they had their own little death game in there, potentially. I guess that might have been why everybody was dead, too, in our, like, vision or whatever before. Because, like, um, there was no blood or anything, I don't think. It's possible, though, of course, the culprit would need some way to survive it themselves. Granted, they were the ones that found it, but maybe we already changed the future just because we talked, we told them, you know, about how, whatchamacallit, um, just because we told them to, like, investigate the, you know, fake exit or whatever. But why go through all the trouble? <laughs> they killed 22 people at the same time in the research facility. The culprit could have just, could easily do the same to us if they wanted to, but that's not fun. They want it to be fun. Doesn't add up. Maybe they're just looking to make us panic rather than wipe us out. I was discussing our next move with Workaholic in the dining room, but these two overheard us. Keep your pants on. When I'm done, that big black doohickey's gonna be a bucket of scrap. When you're done, have you forgotten how it took all our efforts just to buy us some time? You're being way too reckless. It'll be different this time. I've worked myself into shape the past two days, so I can wallop that thing. No way it'll get one over on me. I too stand at the ready. Techie hath amended mine armor to flawless impenetrability. That loathsome sable monstrous monstrosity shall taste the fury of my fists. I guess we can just like throw them out, right? You two need to relax. I understand that you're unhappy with our lack of progress these past two days. But haste makes waste. As they say, it's and more it's more important to keep calm when your back's against the wall. Workaholic's right. Holmes gave her life to protect us. Do you really want to put yourselves back in danger after that? Gah. Uh, thank you, Big Chunk and Nico Burger King. Fuck, <laughs> I love that so much. Glad to see Snippy Whippy is still alive. They deserve a Whopper and some fries. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. They do deserve a Whopper and some fries. Rowdy flinches, but her expression turns spirited once again as she sinks to her knees, touching her head to the floor. Come on, trust us. I know I ain't much. I ain't much when it comes to head work, but these fists can help you here and now. Promise. We seek only to employ our marital might to the advantage of all. Armor follows Roddy's lead, falling to his knees and blowing before, bowing before beseeching us in a piteous tone. Lady Roddy and I take pride in the strength of our arms, yet we're of no succor to Lady Ideal. We cannot remain idle whilst our allies could be slain. They love that word, dude. They love it as almost as much as me. Rowdy, armor. I get where the two are coming from. Their areas of expertise don't contribute much to our search for the hidden passage. They didn't really say slay or slain that much in like Danganronpa, or to Die, or any other death game I've played. This one, they fucking love that word. <laughs> Y'all are jinxing yourselves. I don't even have to do it. They were already frustrated and now they're... And now there's these poison vases that could have killed their fellow detectives. No wonder they're so wound up. Been totally useless too, so I know how they feel. Seeing as I'm the one in their shoes, it's up to me to dissuade them. Now, how can I talk them out of this? Perhaps this would be a good time to use your de denouement. You want me to make- you want me to turn into a French person? No, <laughs> make a prediction right here? How would I even do that? I whisper out as Holmes appears beside me. She then begins to explain, her face gentle and mild. As I told you in your dream, the denouement can foresee future tragedies when provided with sufficient visual feedback. So long as the re requisite information is in your sight, you should be able to predict these tragedies consciously. It's obvious that Armor and Rowdy will die if they attempt to fight that black machine, no? So try finding out what their outcome will be. <laughs> yeah, you mean predict- I mean, I think it's pretty- I don't know if we really need to do a brain blast for that one. I respond on instinct, taken aback by how blithely she made her grimmick suggestion. 
Obviously, I'm hesitant to foresee the demise of my friends. You understand, don't you? Everyone can guess these two will die if they go to the offense. The real issue is that they won't accept it. Even if you can see the future, it means nothing if you can't change it. Therein lies the hardest part. If things continue as they are, they both will die. The only way to prevent this is by proving what terrible future lies in store for them. Okay. I just gotta do it. Obviously, I would never want to picture my friends dying, but right now it's the only way to stop these two reckless detectives. I don't think I have to do anything, but just, just in case. This feels kind of like a tutorial when she's talking like this. Do -do -do -do. The denouement grants me the power to see all. I focus my vision. Yes, use the Sharn Gun. Screw scrutinizing the two people whose futures I need to gleam. <laughs> oh man, so incompetent. Uh, are you a weeb? What's the big idea on us like that? <laughs> are you about to take a shit? Ugh, guys, no, I'm activating it. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> Doing the smolder. Oh, um, well, I'm trying to use a simulation technique. Holmes, Holmes taught me to see if you two can win this fight. S swim Malaysian technique? Hey, you're just like me. You can't say stuff either. What, are you going to paddle all the way down south? And no stupid simulation. He's like imagining what will happen if you two dumbasses go fight. Am I right, incompetent? Exactly, downtown. I'm still getting used to the process, but I'm getting better at it. I saved Doleful in that trapped room yesterday, remember? That was thanks to one of my simulations. Oh my gosh, that was legit scary. If you hadn't jumped in, Doleful would have been a shish kebab. You serious? Rowdy reluctantly backs down. I love how, like, she was like, don't tell anybody about your power or else you'll be a target. He's like, I'm going to tell everybody about my power. <laughs> Rowdy reluctantly backs down after downtown's anecdote. Thank goodness I made that lie up on the fly. But thanks to her, it all worked out. Okay, I'm one step closer to the edge and now I'm about to break, stopping Rowdy and Armor from getting themselves killed. I refocus my vision on the two of them. <laughs> bro i really don't think you have to do a brain dive for this they're gonna fucking die in order to see what happens in the future i need to observe them intently discerning the case causes that will lead to the outcome can these two even battle that thing on equal ground at first they appear to be in perfect fighting shape like they claimed things would surely go better than when we got ambushed the last time maybe they really can take that robot down <laughs> Let's, let's be so for real right now. <laughs> Just as I contemplate this, <laughs> yeah, the brain's like, no, nah, bitch, no. I switch flips inside my head with an audible click. Bam. Then the manner unfolds in my field of view. <laughs> yeah, I mean, duh. Fucking duh. In a split second, my vision is soaked in blood. Ugh. But what if it's just fruit punch? It might just be fruit punch. Maybe they just spilled it. They were just drinking it with the target dog. My head burns in pain to the point where I can no longer stand. I totter before involuntarily sinking to my knees. And then... The world reverts back to the entrance hall. So incompetent, what ails you? What gives? You end up simula stimulating something bad? Oh, wait, I keep... You don't have the Kazuna voice anymore. And trying to curse me already, Weeby? <laughs> In chapter two, no less? Yeah, I saw the worst possible outcome. I press my hand on my forehead, which feels as hot as a tea kettle, and stand up, ready to tell them the facts of the matter. Armor Rowdy, you definitely shouldn't go out there. My simulation show me that if you try now, you'll get overwhelmed in no time. What? The hell are you going on about? Both of you, listen to me. I mean, like, I took down Ideal, and she's, like, literally Ideal. Even a rock slide couldn't damage that thing, remember? There's no way you could be able to bring it down in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Stop being Delulu. You think we don't know that? That's why Armor's gonna be my shield. <laughs> I'm gonna sacrifice him while I scope out its weak points. My armor sustained nary a scratch when it was slashed in our... My armor sustained nary a scratch when it was slashed in our previous bout. Longly shall I be able to stall out that monstrosity. Your body is still compensating for that spot where you got hit though, isn't it? Well, you noticed? Ah, poor armor. Armor recoils, completely caught off guard by, remark by my remark. 
Sorry for not noticing until now, but you're still hurting, aren't you, Armor? If you try to buy time, you'll end up taking a lot more hits than you did before. Do you really think you'll be fine after that? Aye, right, that is. Armor hangs his head in defeat. He knows exactly what will happen if he goes ahead with this plan. Besides in my vision, vision of the future, he was dead and drenched in blood, despite being covered up from head to toe. Nah, confidence has got it all wrong, pal. You'll be fine no matter how many whacks you take, capiche? You can still feel each impact through the armor. Even if the suit doesn't break, the person inside might not be so lucky. From the very beginning, you were fully prepared to walk out that door and die. Am I wrong, armor? After a long silence, armor speaks up in a halting voice. Tis as you say. I intended to lay down. No, armor, can you stop? <laughs> You stop being so sewer slidal. I intended to lay down my life so as to secure an opening. Say it ain't so. I ain't never gonna let you do something like that. Girl, you were about to use him as a shield. Full well did I know you would object. Hence why I resolved not to appraise you. Don't go making plans to sacrifice yourself, you king size dingbat. Why I oughta. And what gives you the right to say any of that? Okay. I turn to see Gourmet, looking unusually upset. Downtown stands next to her, sticking her tongue out with it. I told on you guys. I told on you to mom. She must have gone and called Gourmet over. That girl really is a clever one. <laughs> Weren't you also trying to risk your life for a chance to fight, Rowdy? You're in no position to criticize armor. No, I mean, see, it's like the thing is, my gut told me I'd win, you see. <laughs> But the more likely the result is that you would die. You're not about to approve of a plan that puts your own people in danger. Ugh. Someone's in trouble. Uh-oh! Uh Mom's angry. Someone's about to get grounded. <laughs> Shut your trap. Really is like Gourmet's the mom and the mystic's like the dad of the group. Always sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Um, way to jack my line. What? Just because you don't contribute anything, you're gonna go all kamikaze on us? As if we'd like that. Downtown walks up to Rowdy and flicks her on the nose. Look, we're the Detective Alliance. That makes us a team. We gotta think up of a way to get us all out of here. End of story. Oh, and I can't use my social deduction by myself. So if you think you're useless, that's like saying I am too. Don't do me dirty like that. Biatch. <laughs> oh my god. And there's you, Tin Can. Stop trying to sacrifice yourself all the time. Oh. You better tell us whenever you get hurt. Like even a small injury can kill you if it's poisoned or gets infected. You feel me? Oh yeah, they are the ones who make the food too. They literally are mom and dad. Yes, forgive me for causing you concern. What's that workaholic? Is he like the uncle, I guess? It's like the uncle who's just like there. Hi, you think I'm concerned? As if, Mr. Comic... <laughs> hey, excuse you! Excuse you! How dare you call... How dare you rightfully describe him or correctly descri describe him? As if, Mr. Comic Relief character. I just don't want you, like, screwing us over when the chips are down. You want to protect us, huh? How are you going to do that if you can't protect yourself? How are you going to do that if you're dead, bozo? Bottom line, you need to quit being stupid and listen to the smart detectives. That's what... <laughs> That's what useless extras like us do, right? And got it. <laughs> okay, just now dissing yourself. Uh, yeah. Rowdy and Armor reply in unison, brought to shame by downtown's tirade. Downtown just might be the scariest of all of us when she gets rubbed the wrong way. Looks that way. Workaholic and I exchange sheepish, grin sheepish grins. Hey, Peanut. Oh my goodness. Can you just move around a little bit? You getting comfy? Taking a little nap? Oh my goodness. Workaholic and I exchange grins. Getting back on track. That sim simulation was spectacular. Why didn't you tell us you had this special ability? Yes, it was extremely impressive. Bro, did y'all even see me do anything? Like, <laughs> I feel like all I did was like, yeah, y'all are gonna die. <laughs> They're like, wow, that was amazing. That was so slay <laughs> incompetent. You are an incompetent. Like, I feel like you didn't do, it wouldn't look like anything to them, at least for this situation. I mean, the other one, you know, was more impressive with Doleful. 
Especially the way you stopped armor is hidden injury. Oh, spotted armor. Okay, okay. Okay, I guess they, he did spot the hidden injury. So there is that to be impressed about. Especially the way you spotted armor is hidden injury. Quite the observation, that. Was the chief aware that you had such a keen eye? Oh, um, it really wasn't a big deal. My reply comes out awkwardly, but I still break out into a grin despite myself. I've never been praised like this before, but what makes me even more happy is that this is the first time I willingly use my denouement. I think I have gotten the hang of activating it on command now. It's like Holmes said in my dream. My vision is the key. I can see the future by focusing on the necessary information all around me. And I've noticed something else, too. I need to change it. I'll be in my room. The moment I say this, I begin walking towards my sleeping quarters. What do you say? Need to change it? Oh, uh, oh, I gotta vomit, I guess, from seeing that. That makes sense. Uh, I pass through the hall, and as soon as I enter the room, I thrust my face into the trash can. Just then. Ew. I don't have to do the sound effect for that. Blech. The contents of my stomach comes spilling out. I mean, I don't blame him, though. Jesus. This is awful. My entire body is trembling. Just opening my eyes is enough to make me queasy. It's a disgusting feeling, like someone's grabbing my brain and swirling it around. What's happening to me? I forgot to mention, the day Newmont places an unusually heavy toll in your mind. Take care, as it'll leave you unable to stand for a while. Okay, that makes sense too. Now, now, now you tell me. Now you tell me. I can't take the pain in my skull as, my, as I collapse straight into bed. Renegade the gay cousin who's been to jail. <laughs> I feel like that is like a kind of like a I don't know a cliche in like some uh, family dynamics and like movies there's always like a uh, <laughs> I don't know like a, a cousin or like an uncle who's been to jail my eyes snap open to the sound of knocking nearly groaning from the lingering pain in my head I stand up and walk to the door upon opening the door I see armor standing before me sword incompetent are you well Oh, yeah, sorry to make you worry. I was up late talking to Mystic, Mystic, so I still feel a bit sleepy. I'll be fine. What a relief. My mind is put at ease. You saved me once again this morn. I must apologize. Meseems. Me it's the funniest way of speaking. Meseems me I am, but a burden to you. I must commit seppuku right here. Can you please stop that? Can you please stop trying to sewer slide every chance you get? Armor bows his head. Even through his helmet, I can tell how sincerely sorry he feels. <laughs> Though he often acts without thinking, it's always for the sake of others. I can't find it in myself to fault him for that. Oh, thank you, big chunk of Nico Burger King. Workaholic is the weird next door neighbor of the group who's, who's usually very lonely. <laughs> I can see that too, honestly. <laughs> thank you for the donation. With that, oh, um, don't worry, we all know you're only acting out of consideration for us. Would that I were so noble a man. Huh? Come on, you're a himbo. You're sweet. That's your thing. Pay me no heed. Tis a personal matter. Shall we die in the living room while surveying the camera footage? Huh. Would that I were so noble a man. So you don't think you're a noble person? You're a nice dude. That's like your whole thing. You're like self-sacrificial and stuff. The cameras, did they capture something? Forsooth, I am ignorant of such electrical mechanisms. Prithee, might you instruct me in their operation? Oh, <laughs> sure, I could bring you up to speed and still have time for breakfast. Although it must be past noon by now. But is it okay if I take a shower on the second floor first? I feel kind of gross after sweating in my sleep. Content, in the meantime, I shall gather all repast from the dining hall and meet you in the living room. There yet remain several British sandwiches prepared by Mystic. This forenoon, forenoon, they shall serve as our midday meal. Okay, so Dad made sandwiches. <laughs> That's good. The same ones he made yesterday, they were so delicious. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, armor, he's so cute. Please don't die, Armor. Please don't. I love you too much. He's like trying to die so hard. <laughs> It's like, sacrifice? Oh, I can do that! I step out with a change of clothes, leaving armor at the entrance hall as I head to the second floor. I've been showering a lot, too. I got the shower, still have a sleep, but the warm water wakes me up. 
As I wash myself, the pain in my head dissipates in the heat. Since I reacted this strongly to using my denouement just once, I'm going to want to be extra careful about when and where I pull it out. He didn't really act that strongly the first time, I don't think. I can't just go around predicting things. I left, and right until I'm out of the commission for half a day, I have to save it for when it's needed. Oh. <laughs> Eek! <laughs> oh, God. Whoa. Freshly changed the eggs of the bathroom, only to run face first into downtown. I must have startled her quite a bit. The way she jerks back away from me, it makes me feel a little bad, actually. Downtown, sorry about that. And nah, that was on me. I was totally spacing out there. You were passed out on the camera forever, so I got kind of worried. But hey, super stoked to see you're all good. We we all watched you vomit on screen. We're having a little powwow watching. <laughs> watching that in the surveillance tapes. I get why they put cameras in all the bedrooms, but that does feel kind of, I don't know, kind of weird. <laughs> it's like no privacy at all. Thanks, I'm heading to the living room to eat with armor. Did you want to join maybe? But I guess they're detectives, so they might be okay with giving up privacy for, you know, the greater good. Um, That's cool of you to ask and all, but I'll swing by a little later. Oh no. Um, this is a dead flag. Huh, you have something else going on? I feel like somebody's gonna die soon. Idiot. Do you not know where that door behind you goes? Okay, she's gonna take a shower. Okay, good. Lock the door. Lock it, deadbolt it, whatever you gotta do, girl. Huh? After a moment, I realize this room doesn't have just a shower, but a toilet, too. So I'm in her way, that means. Oh! Oh, you gotta take a dump. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll be in my way. Dipstick. <laughs> she's so funny. I found an apology over and over before leaving downtown to presumably take care of, take care of business. Now that I think about it, there's really only one reason I'd bump into her here. She was right to call me Dipstick. I decided to apologize again once downtown joins us in the living room. Hey, sorry I interrupted your dump you were about to take. Can you not scream that aloud at the dinner table? Armor? I chanced upon Armor at the entrance hall, but I thought he was bringing our lunch to the living room. Did something happen? You didn't have to wait for me. You know, I said I'd meet you in the living room. So incompetent. Something, oh god. Something grave has transpired. Oh, Jesus. Grave? What happened? Oh. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's armor saying it, so hopefully it's something stupid. Come with me to the dining room. Surely is this the most hein heinous occurrence in the history of the Detective Alliance. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. Okay, good. Oh, thank God. It's just beans on toast, right? <laughs> oh, oh, what the? What the? What the fuck? Huh. Why'd they do that? Did they mess up the fridge? Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, no. Mystic was making lunch and somebody maybe, like, fought with him or something. Is that why it got messed up? It was, like, a struggle of some sort? Because he was the one cooking. Yeah, we have been cruelly bereaved of our British sandwiches. That's not all that's gone, though. The fridge has been completely ransacked, leaving all the food in total disarray. Okay, we don't really have that much food to survive on, do we? Jesus. This was probably like all of our food stash. Ugh. At first glance, it seems like nothing edible is left. I was like, this isn't Dong and Rampa where Monokuma just like fills, <laughs> refills the refrigerators, or we have like, you know, 10,000 bell peppers to eat on. We probably don't really have that much besides like what's in the fridge and maybe like a pantry. At first glance, it seems like nothing edible is left. Did the culprit just now decide to starve us? Trying to unravel their thought process here. He ha has me baffled. Whatever shall we do, Sir Incompetent? I knew not if I should sound the uh, alarm, so I chose instead to await your arrival. Mine specifically? My voice jumps against my wishes. Mine? <laughs> my voice cracks. I mean, ugh. I rank far lower than armor and have no experience as a detective, plus zero confidence as a leader. I don't know why he's talking to me. I'm glad you trust me, but I don't know the first thing about giving directions. Was it not your piercing insight that stayed my hand this morning? I haven't a doubt that you, sword competent, will lead us with zeal. Zeal. Armor gives me a pleading look. There's no way I can say no to that. Like, what do I do? It's a detective's duty to live up to the trust of others, Watto. Holmes materializes next to Armor, looking very much like she's enjoying herself. 
She may be right, but I can't know what I don't know. What answer could I give to reassure him? Uh, it's okay to be unsure if you have no idea. Then be honest and say so. Fortunately, there are many detectives aside from the two of you. Be yourself. Start with what you can do right now. Right, I may not be deserving of this trust. But there are plenty of others here who are. Holmes' gentle voice soothes my flustered mind. After I give it some thought, there's really no question about what to check first. Let's let's start with the camera footage armor. The culprit might have been caught on film. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I feel like camera footage is so creepy, man. I remember the last guy we saw on camera footage. That fucking badger. I see such a calm and astute assessment. You never disappoint, sir, incompetent. Cheerily now, and let us hasten to the living room. And course over that footage! Wait a sec. <laughs> Armor takes me by the hand, dragging me from the dining room to the living room. However, despite what I just said, I'm fairly certain that the culprit hasn't been caught on film. My reasoning is simple. Or has or hasn't? Has it? There is no camera in the dining room. Oh, that was kind of a <laughs> misstep on our part. The dining room is so spacious and conspicuous, we assumed that no one would try anything there. We should have known they would target the fridge. We didn't have enough cameras to go around, so we had prioritized our private rooms and other locations where a murder was likely to occur. We also made a mistake in not considering that the culprit might go after the fridge. But why now of all times? I still can't figure it out. What are they trying to achieve? That's kind of a bad thought, but... No, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't think it's very likely, but I was like, it was Armor and, like, um, Rowdy who did want to leave, so I feel like it would kind of actually make potential sense for them to, like, ransack the fridge to where it's like, oh, we have to go with your idea. But it did seem like, it did seem like they believed me in my, you know, like, vision or whatever, so I don't think they would do it, but I was just trying to think of, like, who would ransack the fridge? Who wants us to, like, get out of here? I mean, of course, Renegade could have done it just because he likes drama! What now, sort incompetent? Shall we look for evidence in the ransacked fridge? That's a good idea, but why don't we share this with everybody else first? We need to warn everybody else about what the culprit's doing. Not to mention, they might notice something we glossed over. As I make my response, I recall what Holmes told me. We don't need to rush and go it alone. We can remain calm and start with what we can do. I'll check the rest of the manor on the security cameras. Can you let the others know what happened? Yes, forthwith! I feel like we're gonna see a body on one of those cameras. I guess we'll see. That's how it always is in, like, Among Us. You're like, I'm gonna check the security cameras! And it's like, dead. Armor follows my directions, taking out his D-pad. Good, that's the ticket. Holmes smiles next to him. She's clearly having a good time. I'd like nothing more than to snap back at her, but I can't as long as Armor is there. Instead, I let out a heavy sigh, then touch the tablet to check the camera footage. First, let's see what's going on right now inside the manor. Maybe we'll notice something suspicious. I use the tablet to check each camera. Okay, so far so good. Yesterday we worked in two groups. Today, however, the detectives are scattered among various rooms. Each seems to be conducting an investigation using their own preferred method. Everyone's on their own today, huh? Not good. That's a bad idea. Hum, oh yes. After this morning's clash, we all went our separate ways. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. It'd be awkward to work together after how intense things got. Armor and Downtown are usually the ones to rally the group, but they were right in the thick of that fight. It's no wonder everybody split up. I guess that makes sense. Could somebody have caused that fight to get the group to split up? I don't think so. Well, Workaholic was there when they were fighting, so maybe. Twit seem I've been not but a vexation today. Pray forgive my shameful- Oh god, if somebody dies because of that, he's totally gonna blame himself. And try to commit seppuku again. Don't worry about it too much. Look, Mystic and Posh are working together. Oh yay! Pa <laughs> Mystic, you're alive! Mystic is touching the floor in contemplation. Meanwhile, Posh sticks some sort of measuring instrument into flower vases. What of the other detectives? How fareth they? Workaholic and Bookworm are pouring through every book in the study, while Gourmet and Rowdy are in the rec room by the second floor living room. The rec room has darts, billiards, ah, oh, billiards, all sorts of things to relax with. They're checking, oh, pff, it's not armor reading that. The rec room has darts, billiards, all sorts of things to relax with. They're checking to see if any were rigged with traps or devices. 
That definitely does seem like a room that would be rigged with traps or something. Doleful is searching the second floor guest rooms alone. I don't spot Renegade or Techie. Oh no, they must be in the hallway. A seven combinant, sir, dumbass. <laughs> What's new? You two look kind of bummed. Oh damn, she do be spitting though. <laughs> it do be true. Downtown. Just when I realized downtown is walking over, she wraps her arms around me. Oh, and a hug and pinches my cheek. It's like my older sister. I totally forgot to tell you this a while ago. Actually, technically I'm older than her. She just acts like an older sister. That's like the vibe she gives. But you were like straight fire this morning. I didn't think you had it in you. Uh, downtown, could you give me a little space? My heart thumps at how close her face is to mine. A whiff, oh God, don't be creepy. A whiff of soap stickle, tickles my nose, causing me to blush. She really is such a touchy-feely person. Take it easy, man. This is a reward for stopping the steel plate and knucklehead. You always seem to keep things real. Yeah, Lady Downtown speaketh truth. If anything, certain competence, you contribute far more than you ought to. Like, even the troublemaker in chief. Troublemaker in chief here knows what's up. If you say so, I'm glad to hear it. These are the first two people I met on Morg Island. So it really does make me happy to have them say this. Our initial encounter, the way they suspected me, it all feels so long ago at this point. Yeah, for real. You know, I feel like we've been gelling ever since we first got on this island. Or gelling? Indeed, twas my peculiar. I feel like we're kind of like, we're kind of like a trio, okay? But what about Doleful? I feel like he's in the trio too. Indeed, twas my peculiar tides that we were brought together. But then fate itself can be rather peculiar. It is a little strange, isn't it? The way we've managed to bond this... Despite these dire circumstances. The live stream freeze for you guys? I saw somebody say that. I think it looks okay on my end. Let me double check. Ah. Just switched my mouse. I'm not used to it. Did I do? Okay, yeah. I think it looks good. So much happened since I arrived. I just hope we's, we've seen the last of it. The only thing I wish for is for all 12 of us to get off this island safely. As answering my wish, the D-pad chirps. Mystic's contacting us. Oh, Jesus. He got, says he's got something to tell us or whatever. So we should wait in the living room for him. Okay. I'm so scared. I'm he's so dead. That reminds me. When we were in the trap room before, he was totally all, I do believe I found the hidden passage. And maybe that's the big reveal. Okay. Joyous tidings indeed. He was just in there too. Hopefully he's good. Let us await Sir Mystic's arrival. We stopped shuffling around and checked the cameras while waiting for Mystic. Oh, Jesus Christ. Suddenly the feed in the trap room flash. Oh, God. Posh rushes out the door. Maybe Mystic told her. Oh, no. We're about to watch him die on screen or some shit, aren't we? Maybe Mystic told her directly to join the rest of us in the living room. But Mystic himself, the person of interest here, doesn't leave. Did something happen? Hum, is something not odd about Sir Mystic? Yeah, he hasn't moved for a while now. Like, what's the deal with that? I <laughs> think his little poses. <laughs> Hold on, he told us to sit tight in the living room, so let's just chill here. We'll watch the cams and go help if something sketchy happens. Oh, God. I got such a bad feeling. Yeah, okay. Downtown's right. Plus, I have my... Denouement ability. To fucking use it right now, so we don't really need to rush here. Even if he uses it, I don't know if, like, he'll really be able to, like, save him in time, you know what I mean? God, we're fucking gonna watch him die on screen. I just feel it. I hear the door open and turn around. I feel like he just told us to sit tight because maybe he, like, knows death is coming or something. I hear the door and open. I hear the door open and turn around. Renegade enters, pushing Techie's wheelchair in front of him. He's got a nice wheelchair, by the way. I was like, dang, that looks comfy, dude. All the cushions. Are we all gathered for Mystic's message? Actually, we were already here checking the camera footage. We were trying to find out who ransacked the fridge. No, not the sandwiches! Oh, so the culprit made their move at last. Wish they would have stayed put until we escaped the manor. Yeah, right. Well, I'm excited for what Mystic has to share. <laughs> His blood. That's, that's all it's gonna be. Well, I'm excited to see what Mystic has to share. He was investigating the trap door for a while. 
It could be that he's found the hidden passage. Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully. Incompetent. Look at the. Oh God. Incompetent. Look at the security cam. Oh Jesus Christ! I follow downtown's lead and hurry to study the camera feed. What the? What the Wait. Oh man, he did have like some bags or something. Is he like poison from the plant or whatever? Mr. Detective sinks to his knees before sliding out of view. It almost looks like he lost consciousness after being attacked. What the, what the fuck? Was anybody watching the camera? What, did somebody hurt Mystic? Don't ask me. We were watching the stream the whole time, but nothing weird happened. You know, besides him just, like, dying randomly. Tis as Lady Downtown says, Sir Mystic hath been suddenly stricken by agonies unknown. We gonna sit here and scratch our butts or go save him? What, but that's impossible. Just then, something even more difficult to believe occurs on screen. <gasps> no! You motherfucker! You mother who fucking did it! Who fucking did it? Somebody used the fucking gaps in the floorboard, huh? To push that little piece of wood out and make it close, you motherfucker! No! The door on the western side shuts all on its own, but we blocked that door. It couldn't have been closed. Not unless the doorstep was... I knew that fucking doorstep was going to be important. Not unless the doorstep was removed. The camera feed, however, tells us nothing. My head starts to spin. I don't understand what's going on. Just what are we... What are we being made to watch? Even without the powers of denouement, I can tell what's going to happen. Yeah! Even like, run? What if we, like, open it in time? Will it stop? Oh, God. Oh, no, the trap is going to be triggered. We need to save Mystic! Oh god, it starts like right where the door opens though too. No sooner do the words leave my mouth than everyone else leaps into action. I'd only slow you down if I so I'll hang back and watch the cameras. If something comes up, I'll notify you via the D-pad. Gotta be careful, Techie. Ultimate iPad kid. As I head to the exit room, I run into a workaholic and bookworm. What's going on? None other fight, I hope. Way worse! Mystic's fucking dying! He's in danger, we're on our way to save him! Father? No! Oh no! Oh Jesus! No, I forgot. Oh my god, I forgot for half a second that she has like the father figure. He's like her father. He's all of our father, but especially her father. The quorum goes pale. Crap, I shouldn't have said that in front of her. But we have to get to the trap room. Don't look at the screen, girly, before it's too late. Oh god, somebody cover her eyes. Fill us in later. I'll stay with Bookworm while you go and handle things. I don't want her to have to see him. Then she's gonna remember it forever, because that's like her her talent. We leave Workaholic and the others behind and spring across the living room toward the trap room on the second floor. Oh god. We're so fucked. <laughs> We're so fucked! Ah, oh, great. It doesn't open from the outside either. Oh god. We're at the door to the trap room, but it refuses to budge. It's just like auto lock? Is that it? I guess it like auto, yeah, like lock so that can't. Ah, oh, god dang it! The doorknob turns uselessly in my hand. Just bust it down then. This is no time to like dwaddle or whatever. Armor, get over here. Now this we've got. Yeah. Our moment has arrived. We can finally be useful. Come on, guys. Please. Rowdy sprints up and lands a kick with all of her strength as armor tackles the door. Not dad. Not father. The door doesn't yield at first, but the two repeat their assaults again and again. Jesus. Oh, finally. How do you like that? Sir Mystic, we have come to your aid. Way to go. Now we can save Mystic. It's like, um. Oh, yeah, he's totally already dead. Downtown lets out a small yelp as she barrels into the trap room. It can't be. I get a bad feeling as I peer inside. Yeah. There's no way. Yes, the Delulu. Drink the Delulu juice. There's no way Mystic's dead. His calm, accurate judgment saved us all yesterday in this very same room. Even if someone got the jump on him, I don't believe he could die so easily. God dang it. I'm sure he'll be, I'm sure he'll greet us with the <laughs> usual cool collected smile. Oh God. It's, oh man. It's, God, it sounds like there's a lot of blood. Not father. Ugh. The stench of blood washes away the last faint traces of hope. The spikes thrusting through the floor have turned the room into a labyrinth. Gradually, they retract down like an ebbing tide. 
Oh, I really hope Bookworm wasn't watching the live feed of that. Oh, God, you can hear, like, the squelching, too. As for the screech of metal retracting into the floor subsides, something heavy falls upon the ground. I look towards the sound and go silent. Oh, no! He still looks so good, well, even while dead. So sad, man. His old deeds. Mystic lies in a lake of red, his face pallid like a wax doll with no sign of life. Yeah, there's no way he survived that. His one exposed eye stares wide from beneath his bangs. Impaled on spikes just moments ago, his corpse is soaked in a shower of blood. Puncture wounds mark his feet to his outstretched arms. Not dead! What am I gonna do? Mystic. I let the words slip out. Unsure of what to expect, of course there's no reply. Beyond Mystic's extended hands, beyond Mystic's extended hands is the table, the sole place of refuge in the spike-laden hell. He tried desperately to get to safety, man, even after he passed out, but never made it. No one could have survived a direct hit from the spikes. The outcome is obvious. Damn, dude. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't get it. The room's totally sealed, right? Like, who even closed the door? How that? How did whatever creep who killed Mystic get away? I think the gaps in the floorboard again. That shit's always worked. That shit's always being used in freaking murder traps. Say, weren't you guys watching them cameras the whole time? Did you clock any sharpers who could have done it? There was not a soul to be seen. Sir Mystic's distress was sudden, and the door sealed all on its own. Huh. It seemed like he told, you know, Posh to leave the room before it happened, too, so I'm just, like, not really... I don't know. I'm not really sure why he would stay in there if he had, like, an idea that something bad was gonna happen. I mean, I guess he could have just told her to get them for the meeting or whatever, but he was supposed to join us, so I don't understand. So what happened? You trying to tell me the Invisible Man did it? The hell's going on here anyhow? Roddy's grief echoes off the walls of the room. Damn. The Invisible Man... Mystic would have loved a phrase like that. The irony is too much to bear. I know, man. This case raises one too many questions. We were watching the security cameras, and yet the culprit managed to kill Mystic without getting caught on film in any way. Could Rowdy be right? Was the killer really invisible? How can we possibly approach this seemingly supernatural case? Why couldn't I protect him? I know, Dad. Why did my denouement show me this? Why didn't my denouement show me this tragic outcome that awaited us? I struggle not to rebuke myself. I'm supposed to be able to see the future, <laughs> but I couldn't even stop my friend from dying. What is this ability even good for? No more British sandwiches either. <sighs> Calm yourself, Watto. There's no sense in blaming the denouement for all of this. God, this song rocks. Holmes materializes at my side, scolding me for resenting my new power. If the demon Numan wasn't triggered, that means you lack the details needed to foresee this outcome. Tragedies, tragedies cannot be changed once they occur. All you can do now is seek out whatever it is you've overlooked. I know that, but how am I supposed to investigate a case as complex and bizarre as this? Remember what Mystic told you. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, these words flash through my mind. Only by conquering one... One sphere of death, can the truth be ascertained? Aw, man. I feel so bad for a bookworm, dude. That sucks, man. I feel so bad for her. She lost her first family, now she lost him, too. And she's, like, super young, too. She must be, like, 12 or something. Thank Watto. Didn't you just learn how to handle the supernatural yesterday? Oh, Lily gave us, like, lessons right before, um, right before we have to use them. That's right, even cases that seem surreal and impenetrable at first can be untangled if you approach them with a calm mind. Step one, do not rule out any possibility. With our ex expertise, we should be able to find the truth that currently lays unseen. Spot on, you've come to realize that even a precognitive a precognitive power like the denouement has regulations, haven't you? No matter how opaque things seem, the rules are always hiding somewhere. Our mission as detectives is to expose these hidden rules. Mystics taught you how to approach the, approach the occult. Thus, only you can bring order to this case. Muster up your courage and lead the way, Watto. I'll do my best. Thank you, Holmes. Oh, man. So freaking sad. I liked him so much, but yeah. I had a feeling all the bonding we were doing with him was like, oh, he's totally gonna die. Thank you, Big Chunk and Nico Burger King. 
Dad just went to Walmart to get some milk. Oh no, yeah, we'll just say that. We'll just, we'll say that. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, we're sending them to Walmart. His, is he the only one at Walmart? Is the old guy there? I still don't even think the old guy's dead. And then, you know, I don't know. Ideal doesn't want to go to Walmart. She's like, nah, I'm more of a Whole Foods kind of girl. I clench my face, sucking myself up. The old me wouldn't have been able to utter a single word in this situation. And even if I had, my shaky voice would have undermined what I was trying to say. But I'm not shaking now. My fear is outweighed by my rage towards whomever did this. Everyone, calm down. I'm the big boss now. Even if the killer is one, we can't see their actions and crimes must follow a certain set of rules. If we manage to figure out those rules, we can catch the culprit, invisible or not. Incompetent? Everyone turns to look at me, but I make my way to Mystic's body without faltering. I know how righteous a man he was. It's almost as if the crime is mocking his belief in the occult. Not to mention our attempts to monitor things. Interesting. It's very monokuma of the culprit. I never felt anything close to the ire that's boiling up in the pit of my stomach over this despicable act. Mystic taught me how to engage with the occult, so it's on me to solve this case. I have to. I have to. Standing before his corpse, I voice my promise. Watch over us, Mystic. I know. Can you come? be a ghost and haunt me i swear that i'll bring this phantom killer to justice Ooh. Hm. the static chapter two the case of the phantom killer oh man i'm sad that he died but that was a good chapter i enjoyed it a good bit i guess it might be good to stop here this kind of seems like a pretty good place to stop since it uh already gave like a title screen we've been going for what like three hours i think that's pretty good kind of tired today <laughs> for whatever reason thanks guys for coming to the stream um yeah it's sad that mystic died hopefully we can kind of get to know him better through like the free time or whatever kind of like backstory events we can get for these characters that i think might happen in like the the new game plus from what it seemed like i read in the chat but i can't totally tell i guess we'll be able to watch like maybe other people play those um play those uh you know videos if i'm too lazy <laughs> to unlock them myself but yeah i guess we'll do the investigation and then like the uh trial slash group meeting i guess i am kind of sad that it doesn't really seem like we're gonna be like getting the culprit you know for these trials i feel like it's just gonna be like oh we figure out how it works and then you know there's just gonna be like one culprit i guess for all of these cases i do kind of i don't know i just love uh i just love the drama of like a dongarampa class trial you know where it's like oh you're getting betrayed by like your friends there's like people fighting and shit but like uh when it's all kind of hypothetical still it's like yeah we can't really fight as much <laughs> there's not as much tea in drama we can't execute them publicly lame <laughs> but uh, i guess we'll probably end up doing that i assume again for the uh for the uh, trial. I do kind of wish we had like a mascot or something too. I feel like that'd be nice. But thank you, Gabe XT, El Bozo. Couldn't even avoid. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> this is a joke, I swear. Definitely a joke. <laughs> no, don't say that about father. Don't say that about him. <laughs> He's try He tried his best. <laughs> thanks for the donation. Appreciate you. And thanks guys for coming to the stream. I will see you next week.